looking at Ernie Panchakowski Field on the north side of South Bend. What a glorious night for baseball. Blue skies, but are they Madonna blue for Marion or Columbia blue for St. Joe? We're about to find out as the rivalry renews once again tonight on the baseball diamond here on the 46th game of the week. And how you doing, everybody? Alongside the Hall of Famer, Bo Hunt, and with Angelo DiCarlo by the dugouts, it's Chuck Freebie. Great to have you with us for another great renewal of one of Michiana's best rivalries, the one between Marion and St. Joe. Marion is the defending sectional champ, and they bring back an experienced team. So it made it a little surprising when they lost their first three games, but both clearly they figured something out because they've won five in a row. Yeah, they took that spring trip down to Clarksville and Nashville area over in Tennessee and had a little bit of a rough start. And I think it was one of those things that was kind of an awakening. Played some really good teams, teams that have already played 15, 20 games in the season. But it was kind of that, oh, we're just going to walk out there. You know, we're marrying, we're good. It was like, oh, wait a second. And so it took them a little bit to get going, and I think they figured it out because they've been playing really well lately. Meanwhile, St. Joe comes into this one with a record of 5-1. and one. They're ranked number 9 in Class 3A. Also high expectations. And for the most part, meeting them, despite the fact that a couple of their veteran players have struggled understandably understandably <laughs> they were just playing in a state championship for basketball just a few weeks ago so it's taken them a little bit to get back into the baseball field and really get to going and i think the biggest thing is just coming together as a group I and mean, they were key positions and other guys had to fill in other guys had to step up a little bit but i think right now at this moment they've really stepped up and came together as a team and it shows in their record angelo de carlo is working the field tonight and angelo you've been through a lot of these marion saint joe games over the years What's special about the baseball version of the rivalry? I think th these guys know each other so much better in baseball than any other sport because they play together in travel baseball. There's 14 different guys that are part of the Land Sharks travel program, and then there's other teams that are playing together too. So they know each other extremely well. You have best friends competing against each other, and then you have friends in terms of the head coaches. They were just talking to each other on Thursday and reminiscing about how their seasons are going just five days before they would play each other. So, And both coaches are alums of the schools. They know all about the rivalry. I think it just adds to it. It's a friendly rivalry, but make no mistake, both teams really want to win it back. Yeah, the concession stand has plenty of hot dogs and popcorn, but somebody's leaving here with a bitter taste in their mouth tonight with the taste of defeat. We'll get you ready for this one with our keys to win and the starting lineups. It's all coming up next on the 46th Game of the Week. This is the WHME TV 46 High School Spring Game of the Week. Brought to you by Bill's Heating, Tire Rack, Reliance, Health Market's Tony Letcher, Crown Trophy, Health Link, Imagineering Finishing Technologies, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Purdue Northwest College of Nursing, Basney Honda, and Ben Soft Pretzels. Also brought to you by And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Tire Rack. TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. A beautiful night for baseball here at Pachikowski Field in South Bend as we welcome you inside the Reliance broadcast booth. Reliance, build, design, renovate. And these two teams haven't had to renovate their starting lineups very much this year. They both have a lot of veteran talent coming back. In fact, Division I talent on both sides. For the Marion Knights, it's in their starting pitcher, Chase Bays, who's also one of their top hitters. Bays is batting 348, but he has an outstanding fastball and curve, which he'll display tonight. And it's one of the reasons he's committed to pitch at Eastern Illinois. And he'll get some help from Bryce Lassane, a young man committed to Triton Junior College for baseball. You know him. You've seen him on the game of the week as a quarterback for Marion. But he actually leads the Knights in batting average, home runs, and RBI coming into this one. The keys to win tonight are brought to you by Land Sharks Travel Baseball. The keys to win tonight for the Marion Knights, they need to stay ahead in the count, offensively and defensively as well, pitching-wise. Play clean defense, can't have any errors, and don't allow those free bases and extra bases on errors and walks. Here's Coach Joe Turnock in his 12th season on what does this rivalry mean to him. I mean, it's... I mean, like I told you before, they know each other and stuff like that. I don't think either one of these teams enjoy losing to the other. Uh, but I, like I said, I think it's respectful because uh, at the end of the day, a lot of these guys play on the same summer travel teams. All these guys live in the same neighborhoods, hitting the same facilities. 
So I, I think there's probably a little bit of ribbing that goes on before and after, but I think it's I think it's all within the, you know the level of mutual respect for each team. There aren't a whole lot of South Bend baseball players that have been recruited to play baseball at the University of Notre Dame, but Jace Lee is one of them. In fact, he's considered one of the top 100 recruits in the nation. Now, he's been off to a bit of a struggling start because, as Bo mentioned, just 16 days ago, he was playing for a state basketball title. But Lee batting 176, and when he gets on base, he can be dynamic. Five stolen bases can also go get it in center field. And he doesn't have to do it alone. They've got a really nice shortstop in the junior class by the name of Joe Washburn, who's batting 4-12 for the season, leads the team in homers. Quick, has great range at the shortstop position, and he can be a game changer on the bases as well. As we mentioned, keys to win brought to you by Landsharks Travel Baseball. Keys to win for St. Joe tonight. They need to throw strikes. It don't matter who's pitching out there. They cannot give any free passes. Play air free. That gets them in trouble sometimes in some games, and they need to stay disciplined at the plate. Do not swing at stuff in the dirt. Here's John Smolinski, and he talks about how the season has gone so far for his Huskies. It's going good so far. Um, I'm proud of these guys. We've been in a lot of ball games, and our, our pitching has been great. You know, we've been able to count on the guys, and we've just been competing. Johnny Smolinski was a heck of a player at St. Joe. In fact, the Hall of Fame coach at Marion, Tim Priester, said he was one of his favorite players to compete against. Priester also loved beating John Smolinski, and uh, I can guarantee his successor, Joe Chernock, would love to do it, too. It's Marion and St. Joe, the starting lineup. Some first pitcher coming your way after this on the 46th Game of the Week. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Basney Honda. Proud to be your go-to resource for all things automotive. Getting ready for the first pitch here at Pachikowski Field, the Marion starting lineup. Brought to you by IT Service Corporation. Here's Bo Hunt. IT Service Corporation is leader in Microsoft and Cisco technology solutions. They've been providing experienced sales and technical support to businesses throughout Michigan for over 20 years. You can learn more about their services at itservicecorporation.com and go Marion. Leading off for the Marion Knights, J.J. Oliver is a senior hitting 400. Been all in IC the last two years. Batting second, Chase Bays, the pitcher, committed to Eastern Illinois. Batting third, Bryce Lesane, heading to Triton Junior College, leading the team in average home runs and RBIs. Batting fourth. For the Marion Knights, Evan Schmittendorf, the catcher. He's a four-year starter for the Marion Knights. Batting fifth, Cole Hunt, utility player, hitting 287 on the year. Sixth is Jacob Oliver. Seventh is Pregoda. Batting eighth is the second baseman, Silvio Gardini. And ninth is Brian Carrillo. Meanwhile, the starting pitcher for St. Joe tonight is that young man, Brody Zielinski. He's 1-0 and on the year with a 5.66 ERA. You see the numbers, 16 hits allowed, but an excellent strikeout to walk ratio of 15 to three. Zielinski will throw the fastball right around 85 miles an hour. He's got a nice curveball, and he's willing to throw that change up to right-handed hitters, and change up might be a very important pitch for a pitcher tonight. Our game time weather, outstanding. It couldn't get any nicer than this in April in South Bend. It's 74 degrees, a gentle zephyr blowing out of the northwest eight miles an hour. Might hurt a fly ball, hit to left, help one hit to right, and there's not a chance of rain. Leading our weather tonight brought to us by our friends at Holy Sean Cross Village. You're looking Oliver. at Steve Kaiser. He's working with the Hall of Famer, Bob Schellinger, who's doing the bases tonight. Very good veteran crew for this game. Glad you've joined us for Marion and St. Joe. On TV 46, J.J. Oliver leads it off for the Knights, and the first pitch is a little bit low for ball one. Oliver batting 400 on the season, no homers and five driven in for the all-NIC second baseman a year ago. He pops this one up foul behind home plate, now to play, and it's one and one. First inning is brought to you by Marion High School. Students have multiple opportunities to take dual credit classes and those account for both high school and college credit during their four years at Marion. Thanks to Marion High School for their support of high school sports. Outfield shading Oliver to pull just a little bit and he pops this one up into short center field. Jace Lee with the sunglasses on makes the one hand catch. And that's how our ball game begins defensively. For the St. Joe Huskies, here's how they set up with Brett Mason in left. 
Chase Lee in center and Ben Van Fleet patrolling right field. It'll be Owen Fuda at third, Joe Washburn at short, Brady Loniger at second, and Holden Hardesty at first. Brody Zielinski working with his battery mate Owen Valent, and this pitch is bounced up the middle to Joe Washburn. He's got it behind second, throws quickly to a run. Always nice to have a one pitch out, especially in the first inning, and keeping now that pitch count down. One, Bryce, Check see. out that St. Joe defense one more time. This has been a problematic area for the Huskies. They have 14 errors in six games. The right side of that infield strong. Zelensky occasionally gets himself into trouble with his fielding. Here's Bryce Lesane, the third baseman, takes the pitch inside. Lesane, as we mentioned, triple crown right now for Marion. He's batting 414 with a homer and 13 knocked in and has a four-game hit streak coming to this one. That pitch misses inside as well, and it's 2-0. Zelensky so trying to work that inside corner on Bryce. Back two pitches. Outfield respectfully deep, but this one beat into the ground, and Washburn fields the chopper two hopper, and it's a one, two, three inning for Brody Zelensky. Only six pitches needed to get through the top of the first. No score at the patch. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week brought to you in part by Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, putting people over products. Starting in lineup for the St. Joe Huskies, that is. Washburn in the shortstop making two plays right there, leading the team with a 4-12 average. He's been prep baseball Indiana 3A All-Stater. Batting second, Jace Lee, the commitment to Notre Dame baseball. Batting third, the catcher, Owen Balin. He's been our 46th student athlete of the week, hitting 286. Clean up, Brett Mason. Brett Mason hit 136 last year and is now hitting 381. What a turnaround for Brett Mason he's had from last year to this year. Fifth is Owen Fuda, the third baseman. Only played four games last year as a sophomore, but this year looking to get a lot more playing time. Batting sixth, the pitcher, Brody Zielinski. Seventh is Holden Hardesty, Ben Fleet in the eight hole, and Longinger in the nine hole. Chase Bays gets the start tonight for the Marion Knights on the hill. Bays committed to Eastern Illinois, is one and one on the year with a 3.60 ERA in 11 and two thirds innings. He's only given up six earned runs, 17 strikeouts, so he can bring it, but nine walks, so he doesn't always harness it all that well. A fourth generation baseball player. His great-grandpa played in the minor leagues. His grandpa played up at Ferris State. His dad played ball at Southwestern, and now he's going to get the chance to go to Eastern Illinois facing a, Mar a St. Joe lineup that's scoring 7.3 runs per game, and they swing it pretty well, Bo. They hit 310 as a team. Yeah, they are definitely hitting it well this year and really putting it together. And a reminder, this first inning sponsored by Marion High School. Students have multiple opportunities to take dual credit classes and those that count for both high school and college credit during their four years at Marion. And these classes are offered at no additional cost to Marion families. To learn more, visit marionhs.org or contact the Marion Administration Office. And we appreciate Marion sponsoring our first inning. A word of prayer for the infielders and the outfielders before this one gets underway. Never a bad idea. And Joe Washburn gets ready to step in there for St. Joe. Washburn on the season, batting 412 with a homer and four driven in. And this is one of the reasons he was an all NIC selection a year ago. He swings a mean bat. He batted 462 last season. Not only that, but his wills help him out as well from that left-hand side especially. Which is why Bryce Lassane is in on the grass, but Washburn pounds this one to the second baseman, backhanded, and Gardini struggled getting to his feet, and Washburn with terrific speed beats it out. They're going to have to score that a hit, only because Gardini fell down as he was trying to field the ball. Yeah, it was one of those, took just a little bit of a bad hop there. Gardini had to, actually, here you can see the health markets replay of it, just a great hustle down the line by Washburn. I think he was going to beat that out regardless. Washburn can flat out fly. He has eight steals on the year, and Johnny Smolinski likes to run his guys, and he's got a guy at the plate that makes pretty good contact in Jason Lee. Lee takes a breaking ball outside for ball one as we set the Marion defense. Prisgoda, Oliver, and Carrillo the outfield. Lassane, Oliver, G Gardini, and Hunt gets the start at first for the injured Cam Bortome. Bays and Schmittendorf the battery, bounce to third. Nice backhand pick by Lassane, and he throws to second for one. 
And that's all they'll get. That is a honey of a play by wow. Bryce Lesane at third. Wow, what a play by Lesane. I mean, that's a hot one down to the hot corner down there. And that's one reason why he's going to Triton Juco. Just a great job. And the ability to get it to second to get that lead out with Washburn speed was just magnificent. Not out of the woods yet. Here's Owen Balint, the catcher batting 286. No homers and four RBI for the former 46th student athlete of the week. Another breaking ball misses outside for ball one. Bays with a pretty good curveball, and the fastball usually comes in there right around 87, 88. Another bender, and it froze Balint, and he takes it for a strike. The outfield playing Balint to pull. He's got a pretty good hole between third and short as J.J. Oliver sh shades him towards second base, hoping to turn two. Throw over to first, and Lee dives back in, and he's another of the burners on this St. Joe Husky team. He has five steals on the season. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one-two punch at the top of the order with the speed that they both have, him and Washburn. Lee bluffs that he's going, and Balint takes another bender for a strike. So. Bays, who typically relies on his fastball, nothing but breaking stuff so far to Owen Balin. Yeah, a little bit of homework there, going to Balin, throwing him the curve, three curves in a row, and expect maybe a high outside fastball right Yeah. There goes Lee, the pitch golf towards left field. Here comes Prisgoda, and he can't get there. It drops in. Lee will lope and dive and get into third base, and that allows Balin to hustle over to second. It'll be a single for Owen Balint, and he takes second on the throw as you get another look from Tony Letcher in health markets. Nothing Prusgota could do. He was playing deep for Balint, and that was more of a Texas leaker. Landsharks Travel Baseball was started by the late great coaching legend Jim Reinbold 20 years ago, and it's still going strong with a fantastic indoor facility in Niles that can be accessed by its baseball and softball teams at any time. Visit shkbaseball.com to learn more. Two in scoring position for Brett Mason, who leads the team already with eight RBI, and he takes a curveball the other way towards right field. Carrillo looking into the sun makes the catch. Lee tags from third and he can walk home. From there, it's one nothing Huskers. Just a great job of putting the ball in play by Mason, getting that sack fly, understanding what your job is there at that position. So here's Owen Fuda, the third baseman. Fuda, a 294 hitter with no homers and four knocked in. He had two hits and two RBI in their win Friday against Mishawaka. What a slugfest that was as St. Joe had to rally to beat the Cavemen 14-12 over at Fitzsimmons Field. Fastball by Bays misses outside for ball one. Key hit of the inning was the bloop single by Balin with Lee on the run. The pitch bounces in, a good stop by the all-conference catcher Evan Schmittendorf, and the count goes to 2-0. Fuda only played a few varsity games as a sophomore, but here in his junior year, getting the starting nod at the hot corner. The pitch, fastball outside corner, and it goes to two and one. Just catching that outside there, great pitch. Outfield playing straight away, not all that deep for Fuda. Slice towards the right field line. It'll curve foul. There is a ton of foul territory here at Pachakowski Field. It typically plays as a pitcher's park. 315 down the left field line, 400 to dead center, and 320 down the stripe and right. So while left and right are a little tight, the pitchers get a lot of love from foul territory. Yeah, and with the wind blowing in, holding some stuff up today, definitely got a little bit extra area as well. The 2-2 from Bays. Fastball missed outside, and we go full. Brody Zielinski, the pitcher, waits on deck. St. Joe drawing first blood and trying to add to it here in the first. Time called by Steve Geyser. It was requested by the hitter, Fuda. Big difference between high school and the games you watch on TV most of the time. There's no pitch clock here. No pitch clock. Take as long as you want up there. 
Fastball missed upstairs, ball four. So Bays issues his first base on ball of the night. Runners at first and second for Brody Zielinski, who can help his own cause here. Zielinski batting 300 on the season, no homers and four driven in. And you have to think revenge might be on Brody's mind tonight because he was the losing pitcher in last year's sectional championship game to these Marion Knights. Pitching a very good game up until he got high in the pitch count. Started losing a little bit of control at that point. And he's the type of pitcher that can go really deep in games as well and have a high pitch count. But definitely looking to bounce back here. Just a sophomore last year, junior this year. He's been pretty good at the plate as of late, too. Five of his last 11. He hits a curveball here fouled on the first base line, and the count goes to nothing and two. Ben Soft Pretzels has been supporting high school athletics since 2008, and they believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education. And we're proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. Bays trying to get out of the first without any further damage. And a line drive center field base hit. Charging is Jacob Oliver. He'll throw to the plate. They'll hold the runner. Because Balint fell down rounding third. So the bases are loaded as you get another look at this one from our friends at Tony Lutcher, Matt Tallman, and Health Markets. Well, that was actually, I believe, Short, Luke Short, that was pinch running for Balint, fell as he was coming around third base there. Short is in there as the courtesy runner, which often happens with catchers at the high school level so that they can have the equipment on, move the game along. Here's Holden Hardesty, the first baseman, seventh batter in the order. Batting 294, and he takes a breaking ball outside for ball one. And early on, Bay's relying on his breaking ball a lot more than we've seen him in the past. Yeah, he's thrown quite a few here. Starting out the first inning, you normally you see a lot of fastballs in that first inning, a lot of curveballs by him here. There's the fastball, and it's fouled back in the count one and one. Hardesty with a four-game hit streak coming into this one. St. Joe, not a lot of pop in the lineup, but boy, they consistently make good contact. The base is loaded with two away here in the first, and Bay's... Wants a little bit of extra time. You would think that the pitch count would be mounting with the seventh batter of the inning, but we're still under 20 pitches for Chase Bays in this inning as he finds the inside corner there. And the count is one and two. Big situation for both teams here. St. Joe looking to put a few more on the board here in the bottom of the first. The one two fastball got him swinging. Down goes Hardesty and Bays works out of the bases loaded jam, but not before giving up a run on two hits. Actually, three hits. Here's the sack fly that brought in Jace Lee, and it's one nothing St. Joe after one on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Bills Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. And our second inning sponsored by our friends at St. Joseph High School. Brody Zielinski had a very efficient top of the first. He only had to throw six pitches, seven pitches, excuse me, to get out of the frame. Now he'll face the four, five, six hitters in the Marion batting order, and it'll start off with Evan Schmittendorf, the catcher, and you'll meet him a little bit later in our game as he is one of our 46 Tony Letcher Health Market Student Athletes it's of the Week. It's always it's nice to get through that first nice. inning and keep your pitch count under 10. As a pitcher, you just feel so much confident, and then when you come back in the second and you have a one nothing lead already, it gives you that much more confidence going into the second inning. Schmittendorf batting 250, does have a homer and seven knocked in. Fluorescent orange bat up there as he takes a strike right down the middle, and it's nothing to want. This is a four-year starter at catcher. Boy, you don't see that on the high school level often. Not at a 3A school. You never don't see that very often. Breaking ball misses in the dirt, and the count evens a one and one. Schmidt-Dorf was all NIC a year ago. 
only made one error behind the plate last year, and he's done pretty well in his career against St. Joe, 8 out of 21 at the plate. Breaking ball misses low, and the count goes to 2-1. and one. Zielinski threw very well this year in the win over 4A Mooresville that St. Joe had. He gets a foul ball here to the Husky dugout, and the count's two and two. two, two. Sophomore prominent sophomore Snyder came in for him, closed that game out, did a great job as well. Another young arm for this St. Joe team. Breaking ball, did he go? Bob Schellinger says no down at first base, and the count goes full. Three and two on Evan Schmittendorf to lead off the top of the second. Fastball low, and he walked him. Just the fourth walk this season now issued by Brody Zielinski. And Schmittendorf, you might not expect it from a catcher, but he leads Marion in stolen bases this season with four. So you can't go to sleep on him. And here's the left-handed slugger Cole Hunt at the plate. Hunt batting 286 takes that one inside for a ball. What can you tell me about this kid, bro? Uh, not much, <laughs> you know. Um, he eats late night snacks, I can tell you that. <laughs> and plays with a hoodie on. Yeah. Ground ball through the hole into right field, a base hit. Schmittendorf Brown second and will hold. And Hunt with a single. That's a four-game hit streak for Cole Hunt. And you'll get another look from Johnny Letcher Health Markets. Yeah, just a great job of really knowing the situation, pulling the ball, getting that, getting Schmittendorf to second base and was uh, fortunate enough that Longager was playing up the middle. Now Jake Oliver, who has struggled at the plate so far this year, batting just 100, no homers and four knocked in. He batted 259 a year ago. And Zelensky will step off the rubber. Jacob, one of those players, his average doesn't speak to the way he's been hitting the ball. He's actually been hitting the ball really well, but just right at people. Here's a little bunt up the first base side. It's fielded and thrown out. The sacrifice moves two into scoring position for Michael Prisgoda. Reminder, this second inning is sponsored by St. Joe High School with faith, character, and excellence. St. Joe High School transforms students in heart and mind, preparing them for college and career success. Thanks to school choice expansion, tuition is more affordable than ever. Learn more about joining the St. Joe family by visiting www.stjohigh.com. The lefty stick, Prisgota, swings and misses at a fastball. It's nothing one. Mike by batting 125 on the year. Had a key two-run hit Friday, though, in their win over Concord. Zelensky trying to get out of a jam here. He jams Prisgoda, who takes it into right field. One run will score. Hunt holds it third. We're tied at one. Boy, Prisgoda did a beautiful job of fighting that pitch off and finding a hole. Yeah, that was just a really good job, really just going down, getting that ball, knocking in the hole, knocking a run in. So first and third, still only one down, and here's Silvio Gardini, the sophomore second baseman. Gardini still looking for his first hit with the Marion Varsity. Typically, He's the guy they DH for, but the injury to Cam Bortone thins out the ranks a little bit for Joe Turnoxine. Yeah, Gardini just an excellent second baseman, just a sophomore. Um, only a couple underclassmen that actually play a lot of time for this uh, Marion team with all the seniors that they have, but just does a great job at second and right but there. Turns on a fastball here and it gets past Washburn in the left field, an RBI single. Gardini's first varsity hit gives Marion the lead. It's 2-1. Now up to bat number 15, Brian Carrillo. If you're going to get your first hit, how about in a rivalry game to break a tie? And on TV 46 <laughs> to boot. Hunt made sure that one got through, but there wasn't much doubt. Washburn would have had to make a heck of a play to come up with that. Now the nine-hole hitter, Brian Carrillo. Batting 250 on the year. He laces one down the third baseline, a fair ball. 
They will go ahead and send Frisco to know they hold him up because the left fielder Mason did a great job getting over to the line to get that one. Yeah, that was a great job by Mason cutting that off. Frisco to didn't quite get a good turn there coming around third base, but it was a good hold up, I believe, by Turnock holding him up. But to get to the top of the order, only one out, and bases loaded with JJ, one of their hottest players in this lineup. And it'll cause Owen Balin to make a trip to the mound here, as will the pitching coach for St. Joe. Ivy Tech programs are made to prepare students for great careers in high paying, high demand jobs. Find the program meant for advancing you toward your career quickly and affordable. Classes, classes that fit your busy life in person, online, and in between. Enrollment is open. Visit ivytech.edu slash apply. So the conversation ensuing here on the bond, and I'm pretty sure Steve Kaiser will go out and break it up here shortly, but I think if nothing else, they just want to give Brody Zielinski a rest from the momentum that Marion has built up here. A walk, four singles, and a sack bunt have been the Marion inning. But let's go downstairs for Bill's heating sideline report. Angelo DiCarlo, what do you got? Pitching coach for St. Joe this year, Tyler Beck. Played triple-A baseball last year, came back, and is now a pitching coach for St. Joe at his alma mater. J.J. Oliver at the plate. He flew out to center his first time up. He hits a breaking ball high in the air towards right field. Van Fleet shading his eyes, gets some momentum, makes the grab, the tag at third, and they're going to hold Prisgota as Van Fleet uncorked the missile to the plate. Yeah, that was a great job by Van Fleet just putting that ball in line. It was more of a read by Prisgota at third base. He took off. It was watching the ball as he was going. If the ball was probably up the line a little bit or more towards the Marion dugout, he probably would have kept going. And remember, Frisco's had ACL problems in his career, primarily from his football career. So the speed, not maybe what it once was. Chase Bay steps in there now with a chance to help his cause. Base is loaded two away. Marion up 2-1. And he takes a breaking ball outside. It's 1-0. and oh. Bays bounced out to short his first time up. Bays had the game-winning hit against St. Joe in the regular season last year on April 18th. Swing and a miss at a Zelensky heater here, and it's 1-1. One one. Health Markets is proud to support high school athletics. If you're a Knight fan, Tony Lecter is your guy. And if you cheer for St. Joe, Matt Tallman will take care of you. Health Markets with Tony Lecter and Matt Tallman. Bay's a four-year starter. Swings and rifles one towards right field. Van Fleet on the run, and he can't get there. It's over his head and off the wall, and the merry-go-round has started. One run is in. Two runs are in. Bays has to third with a diving slide. It's a three-run triple, and the Knights lead it 5-1. Wow, what a ride by Bays. Driving that to opposite field, just a great job of staying through that ball, driving at the opposite field. Big triple by the Knights here. Here you can see the health markets replay, just a great job. And we talked about the wind blowing kind of from left to right here. It's kind of blown a little bit more towards that foul pole, but that got up in the gust and really started carrying that ball. I don't think there's any doubt the wind helped that one quite a bit. And now Bryce Lesane, the ninth batter of the inning, takes a strike right down the middle. It's nothing in one. What a start for Joe Turnock's team in this one, putting five on the board in the second. And still not done as Lassane fouls that one off. And this has been part of the problem for Brody Zielinski this year. He has one bad inning every game. Well, right now, he's living through it. Yeah. And Base hit into left field, make it 6-1, Marion. And the Knights have batted around here in the second. Lassane well, driving in another run, and for Bryce, that's his 14th of the season. You get another look. Well, a lot of things we talk about with pitching is you always got to go right after that first guy. When he walked Schmittendorf, that first first batter here, there he just getting getting a little carried away, trying to throw the ball over a pickoff and kind of threw it away as well. But Well, and he hit Lassane, who is in obvious pain over there on the first base bag. He yeah, got his elbow. 
He wears that elbow sleeve, but you see the career RBI entering today, and now Bryce Lesane right on up there with J.J. Oliver, tied with 67, a couple behind Lee. And it bears noting that on this Jackie Robinson day, two of the three people on that list are African-American players who obviously Mr. Robinson opened the door for back in 1947. Making his debut with the Brooklyn Dodgers on this date in that year. Fastball misses outside, 2-0. and Lesane took some hits during the football season, so he'll be able to shake that one off. Another throw over to first, and Bryce goes diving back in. Lesane led the Knights in RBI last season with 34 and already on a good pace this year. The 2-0 popped in the air. Who wants it? Balint with the mask off, calling. Now he's called off by the pitcher, and Zielinski will make the catch. But a big six-run inning for Joe Turnock's Marion Knights. They get six runs on six hits. There were no St. Joe errors, and the man left on base. And after one and a half, it's 6-1 Marion. A reminder, next Friday, we will have more baseball action, this time from the Northern Lakes Conference, as the Northridge Raiders go calling on the Mishawaka Cavemen. That should be a pretty good contest over at Freddie Fitzsimmons Field at Ward Baker Park, and we'll have it for you Friday night at 11, and Saturday morning at 9 on your home for high school sports. But let's go down for a Bills heating sideline report. Angelo DiCarlo's got the Marion head coach, Joe Turner. Well, coach, I imagine you have to be pretty pleased with that happening. Yeah, that's not a bad way to go, but a lot of baseball to go. I mean, they still got their bats here in a second. They got a lot of outs left, so we got to keep playing and keep the foot on the gas, all right? You've got consecutive singles from seven, eight, and nine in your order. How much does that help? Oh, it's huge. Turning the order over is huge. And, you know, it's everybody just doing their part, doing their part, not to, trying to do too much. Just do your job, and everything will take care of itself. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck the rest of the night. Chuck and Bo, back up to you. All right, thanks, Anj. And as long as we're talking about the Marion Knights, let's give a shout out to our guy, Bob Nagel, who on Saturday night was part of the class inducted into the Marion High School Hall of Fame. And it was great to see my man out and about. He has had a ton of health issues since he left TV 46 and still fighting the good fight. But uh, his speech was very Bob-esque. It was, <laughs> it was filled with hilarity. It was filled with humility. It was all class. And quite the class there of Marion Knights. Standing right behind Bob is Nick Barnes, who was, played on their 1973 state champion football team. The guy in the cap next to Bob, that's Demetrius Jackson. He's only got a basketball court named after him. No big deal. DJ Fitzpatrick, former kicker at Notre Dame, sitting there as well. So uh, some terrific athletic figures at Marion. And uh, tip of the cap to our man Bob Nagel for being part of that class. Oh, yeah. I, you know, was fortunate enough to meet Bob back in the early 90s when I was in high school when he was interviewing me and really loved that. And then uh, 18 years ago when Bob and you uh, came to me uh, about this opportunity to be, work with you guys and both of you guys have been such mentors and especially Bob, miss him, miss him dearly being up here with us and everything. But just uh, congratulations to him. He did well deserved. Absolutely. As you saw our vantage point from the Reliance broadcast booth, Reliance. Build, design, renovate. We go to the bottom of the second, and St. Joe with some catching up to do down 6-1. Ben Van Fleet will lead it off, the right fielder. And he takes one high and in from Chase Mays for ball one. Van Fleet batting 278. No homers and six runs batted in. And, Bo, I imagine it's a different mindset for Chase Mays going to the mound with a five-run lead. Yeah, at this point now, you're probably going to see a lot more fastballs out of him, trying to go right at guys. Popped up into short right field. The wind has it, and it drops in, and there goes Van Fleet into second base with a hustling double. So miscommunication between Carrillo, the right fielder, and Gardini, the second baseman, and we've got a really high sky today, Bo, and the, these guys don't play a lot of games in this kind of sunlight. No, that was just such a tough play, and there was really... Uh, Nobody really wanted to take charge of that, and you know, being so, probably nobody really saw it. A hustle double for Van Fleet. That ought to make his grandma, Patty Knight, who's 
waging a fight with breast cancer, a pretty happy camper. And here's Loniger, the second baseman. Brady comes into this one, batting 389 on the year and takes that pitch high for ball one. Reminder, the second inning is brought to you by St. Joe High School with faith, character, and excellence. St. Joe High School transforms students in heart and mind, preparing them for college and career success. Thanks to school choice expansion, tuition is more affordable than ever. Learn more about joining the St. Joe family by visiting www.stjoehigh.com. Well, St. Joe has had some big comebacks this year in games... Uh, the other night against Mishawaka for one and Warsaw in the season opener. So you heard Joe Turnock telling Angelo not that all impressed with the five run lead and certainly can't take the foot off the gas here. Yeah, especially if they get the eight nine on with the top coming back up. I mean, that's one of the key things. Get those bottom guys on to the top. Swing and a miss on some high heat there and it's two and two. You might want to stay in that location if you chase Bays. Be really tempted to come back with that same pitch here. The 2-2. Two -two. He tried, but a bouncer up the middle. It came downstairs a little bit. They'll hold the runner at third. It's bobbled in center field, though, and trotting in is Van Fleet. On the Marionaire, it's 6-2. Now the Great job by Brady just Lee. driving that ball right back up the middle, doing his job, putting the ball in play. Faye's not able to come oh, back yeah. around and get that ball. Jacob First Oliver bobbled it out there, and Van Fleet was going to hold it third, but said, well, if you're not going to pick it up, I'll come on in. Here's Joe Washburn, who had an infield single his first time up. Nice curveball there by Bays, but it missed inside for ball one. Washburn was featured on the TV 46 show Sports Stars of Tomorrow recently. It's one of those shows where athletes can sh send in their own videos and somebody sent one in for Joe and it's a national show that we carry on TV 46. And I said, whoa, look at that guy. I know him. 2-0. Washburn with the grounder to second, fielded by Gardini to second for one. The relay to first, not in time. Washburn, a really tough cat to double up. Yeah, they got to be really now quick on that. Gardini just a little Jay slow Sleeve. in footwork trying to get that ball to second base. A little high of a throw to Oliver as well. Got to be clean with the speed that Washburn has. Here you can see on the health markets replay. You want to be sure on that first one, though. You don't want to yep. let the lead runner get away. And now here's Jace Lee, who grounded into a fielder's choice on a fine pickup by Bryce Lassane at third. His first time up. There goes Washburn, the pitch outside, the throw to second, and it's not in time. Washburn with his ninth steal of the season. Yeah, still on that first pitch curveball. Good throw by Schmittendorf down there right on the money, but with that curveball hanging just a little bit, Washburn speed wasn't able to uh, throw him out. 20th stolen base of the year for the Huskies as a team, and now you've got a runner in scoring position for the dangerous Jace Lee, who takes another breaking ball here for a strike, and it's one and one. Lee committed to play for Sean Stifler at the University of Notre Dame, but that has not stopped the Pro Scouts from coming out today. The Pirates, the Reds, and the Tigers all represented in the house. Oh, my. Breaking ball inside, and Washburn has another stolen base on the called strike. Lee thought the pitch was inside. Steve Kaiser disagrees, and it's Steve's opinion that counts. Steve's been around for a long time. Same with Schellinger, Hall of Famer. But uh... so now Lee has to protect the plate with a runner on third, the infield playing back. Lee with some pretty good speed. The one two. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. That's a huge strikeout for Bays. Now with the bad catcher, he really tied him Morgan. up with that curveball. And now here's Owen Balin, the catcher who singled his first time up, as you see. Lee struggling with the late break. That one misses outside. 
I will say this, Bayes has a lot of movement on that breaking pitch. Yeah, yeah, that's his, uh, usually his go-to after the fastball, but tonight what we talked about is a lot of curveballs for the top of the order. Infield back, there's another curveball for a strike. And you may remember the first at bat, he really worked Balin over with the curveball. And Balin shaking his head right now about all the <laughs> curveballs he's getting. <laughs> one and one the count. There's another one, but that one down in the dirt. Good stop by Schmittendorf. And the count goes to two and one. Of course, Owen Balin, just a terrific athlete. First team All-State hockey player and also an excellent football player for Ben Downey's squad. Two and one the count. This is away, it's three and one, and Brett Mason stands on deck. A 6-2 Marion lead here in the bottom of the second. Plenty of offensive fireworks in this one so far. Balin would love to bring another run home right here. Breaking ball missed outside for ball four, and that puts runners on the corners for Mason. Did you know the former Marion girls basketball coach, Steve Scott, has been painting homes for 25 years? Whether it's interior or exterior, Classic Touch Painting provides reasonable prices and reliable service. Contact Steve Scott at 574-276-4506. That's 276-4504. Mason with a sacrifice fly back in the first. We mentioned he leads the team in RBI, but Bo, you were telling me before the game, and the numbers would bear this out. He batted 136 a year ago. Here he is in the cleanup position this year, coming in batting 381, and he hits one down the right field line, running over the right fielder, foul territory can't get there, and it's nothing but a strike. How does a player make that kind of progress? Well, I'm telling you right now, I've, I've known Brett since he's uh, been about 12 years old, 11 years old, playing in travel baseball. He's one of those kids that year after year, he just keeps working and he keeps working and he keeps working and he loves the game of baseball. And, you know, you finally get to that point where something clicks for you. Well, this year it's definitely clicking for Brett Mason. Just all the work he's been putting in and it's really paying off for him having a successful season like he is. He had four RBI Friday night against Mishawaka. Went four for five in that game. The 0-1 from Bays. Breaking ball misses upstairs. The runner goes from first. He's safe and it's a double steal and it's 6-3. So Schmittendorf tried to gun down Balint at second, couldn't do it, and as soon as he uncorked it, Joe Washburn raced on home with another Husky run. And now the count one and one on Mason. Bays is ready, the pitch. Fastball down low, and Schmittendorf had to do his best to block that one. Two balls and a strike on the St. Joe left fielder. Outfield playing straight away for Mason. Inside fastball got him swinging and it's two and two. That's a tough pitch right there. You see it when it starts out, it looks like it's gonna be just on the inside part of the plate and then it just keeps running up and in. It's almost a defensive swing. Bays has been able to induce a couple of bad swings in this inning, but the problem is there have been enough good ones to get a couple of runs home for St. Joe. And the count full on Mason here with Owen Fudo waiting on deck. Fudo would represent the tying run of this game if he came to the plate. Breaking ball hit on the ground. Lassane has it go under his glove. It hit the lip of the grass and the dirt. That's a tough play for Bryce Lesane. He was expecting that ball to come up, and when it hit the lip of the grass and the dirt, it went right under him. I would say a base hit there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's one of those where you can't do anything about that. He's going over, expecting that ball to just come right up. And not only did it stay low when he hit that lip, it shot off yep. as well. So Joe Turnock on his way out to the mound to have a conversation with his pitcher, Chase Bays. 
Did you know that 14 different players from both these teams tonight, including both the starting pitchers, play for the Land Sharks Travel Baseball? Or well, Land Sharks have more than 350 players in its program overall, with 30 different teams in baseball and softball. Learn more at shkbaseball.com. Land Sharks Travel Baseball. Well, they're also sponsoring our factoids tonight. We might as well tell you that three of those players they might be talking about are players with college commitments ready to go to the next level. We talked about Jace Lee in Notre Dame, Chase Bays in Eastern Illinois, and Cam Bortone, who's out of the lineup tonight with an injury. And boy, has he had an injury-riddled career in his time at Marion. But he's still played well enough to get the offer and accept from Manchester University. Bortone played all last season with a torn labrum. So you know if he's not in there, he's really hurt. Yeah. Owen Fuda in the box right now with runners at the corners and the pitch a swing and a miss on a fastball. And the runner from first, Mason, standing between first and second, and they're just going to give it to him. So now two in scoring position for Fuda. He had a walk the first time up. Swing and a tap foul off the mid of Schmittendorf from the count, nothing and two. Bays has been able to get ahead in the count tonight, Bo. He just has had problems finishing guys off. Yeah, I think there's the ability to, to get ahead, but the more I look at it here, he's actually only been ahead early in the count on three of those batters tonight. All of them, he's been first pitch ball. Pop up behind home plate, but the wind gets a hold of it and pushes it out of play. The wind was not a factor when we got here to set up earlier today, but boy, has it picked up in the last out. Yeah, that lake effect just really coming off the lake. You get up north here by the state line. And we are within spitting distance of the state line. The problem is if you're spitting that way, it's going to come back in your yeah, face. Right back at you. The 0-2. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and Bays gets out of further damage, but St. Joe picks up a couple of runs on three hits. And after two, it's a slugfest here at Pajakowski Field with Marion leading 6-3 on 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. Third inning tonight being brought to us by our friends at Marion High School. At Marion, we specialize in developing the next generations of leaders while focusing on each student's unique set of gifts. Our large dual credit program, award-winning dedication to STEM and student-led research and excellence in the visual and performing arts sets us apart from other schools. Learn more by visiting marionhs.org. So Brody Zielinski had a rough second inning where he gave up second six runs. So, Bo, take me into the mindset of Johnny Smolinski, the head coach for St. Joe, and his pitching coach, Tyler Beck. How do you get him back on course as he goes out here for the third? Well, I think the big thing is, is he only has thrown 27 pitches in the game. So a lot of them, I mean, you look back, uh, after walking Schmittendorf, Two pitches to Hunt, one to Oliver, two to Prisgoda, one to Gardini, one to Carrillo, one to Oliver, uh, three to Bays, one to Lassane, two to Schmidt again. So, I mean, he, he's throwing strikes. He's going right at them. Um, they're just not having a lot of success of keeping them off the base pass. So, it's, again, just go right at them. Keep doing the same thing you've been doing. Cole Hunt singled and scored as part of that barrage back in the second. And he takes the first pitch upstairs for a ball. Cole has had a nice season on the mound for the Knights as well. As he hits one in the air towards left field, running over his Brett Mason near the line. He makes the grab, and there's one away. It'll bring up Jake Oliver, the center fielder. He laid down a nice sacrifice bunt back there in the second. This game's health tip is brought to you by HealthLink. There's no better way to make sure your athlete is ready to play than with a sports physical. Call HealthLink and schedule an appointment today. HealthLink offers medical, dental, vision, and more. Three-year starter Oliver foul tips one into the middle of the catcher, Balance, and it's nothing to one. 
see if Zielinski returns to the form he had in the first inning when he only had to throw six pitches. Yeah, again, going right at the hitters right here. And Oliver is 0 for his last 17, so that might be the cure for what ails Zielinski as he fans him here. The strikeout sponsored by Crimmins Carpet Services, the first of the night for Brody Zielinski. Quickly two away here in the third, and here's Michael Prisgota who singled back in the second and drove in a run to tie the game at one. Prisgota, a three-year starting safety for Michael Davidson's football team. Saw Mike at that Hall of Fame dinner the other night, and he was playing host to his mentor, Reggie Glock. Reggie. Pitch misses outside, 2-0. and oh. A lot of former Merriam football players honored at that one. The 2-0 pitch, check swing, and he did not go, and Prisgota now ahead in the count, 3-0. and oh. Zelensky walked the leadoff man of the second. Wants to avoid the walk here to Prisgota and peppers the strike zone there. One of those kangaroo court things we always talk about. Leadoff walks and two out walks. And neither will happen here. A pop up into short left field. Washburn circling under it as the wind playing tricks out there tonight. But Washburn makes the catch and it's a one, two, three inning for Brody Zelensky. So Brody Zielinski is able to get the inning taken care of, and we get ready to go downstairs for a Bill Seating sideline report. Well, not this inning, apparently. So we'll take, <laughs> we'll take a break and be back with the bottom of the third after this. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you by Purdue Northwest College Nursing. They'll help you realize your potential. A 6-3 Marion lead here at beautiful Ernie Pajikowski Baseball Field. This facility has been here now for 16 years, way up on the north side of South Bend. The north field sitting directly below St. Pat's Park. And They've got a nice campus here. We were here last year for softball when St. Joe played New Prairie. And we'll see that St. Joe softball team a little bit later on in our spring showcase when they take on Penn. What a power pack game that will be in the NIC in early May. That will be an exciting game just like this one. A lot of talent. Brody Zielinski fouls one back, and I'm happy that fence is working well. Nothing in one. Nagel was spelling in for me on baseball one time and got hit with a foul ball up in the booth that just arched over the backstop and came in the window. Here's Zelensky hitting one deep to right field and over the head of Carrillo. It'll go all the way to the wall. Zelensky rounds first and heads for second and he'll cruise in with a double. Great job by Zelensky going up and getting that ball at the top of the zone, staying through it. Here you can see the health markets replay. Great job driving that curveball to the opposite field. So the bats keep coming as St. Joe tries to mount a comeback in this one. The Huskies once trailed 6-1. It's now a 6-3 game. And here's Big Holden Hardesty, the first baseman. Reminder, the third inning sponsored by Marion High School. At Marion, we specialize in developing the next generation of leaders while focusing on each student's unique set of gifts. Our large dual credit program and award-winning dedication to STEM and student-led research and excellence in the visual and performing arts set us apart from other schools. Learn more by visiting marionhs.org. Hardesty with a rough swing at that one. It's nothing in one. He was a strikeout victim of Bays his first time up. Chase is fan three on the evening. The right-hander fires in a fastball outside corner and it's quickly nothing in two. The one thing about Bays that strikes me, Bo, is he seems unperturbed. He's been in trouble throughout the night here and he doesn't seem to get rattled out there on the mound. No, I mean, he's one of those seniors that's been in this situation before and he just goes right at you. And 
doesn't let anything affect you. Affect Line him. drive, left field, base hit. They'll hold the runner at third, and the Huskies have runners at the corners, and the tying run come to the plate in Ben Van Fleet. Another look from Tony Letcher Health Markets, and as bad as the swing was by Hardesty on the first pitch, he had a sweet look at that one. Imaginary Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imaginary is always working toward a great finish. Thank you, Imaginary, for your continued support of high school sports on TV46. And we don't want to forget Matt Tallman from Health Markets on those replays either. Tony Letcher, the Marion guy, Matt Tallman, the St. Joe guy. Ben Van Fleet doubled his first time up. And he lines one towards right field. Carrillo going back, can't get to it. It's over his head and off the wall. One run is in. Johnny Smolinski will hold the runner at third and Van Fleet with back-to-back -back doubles at 6-4. And take another look as Van Fleet with a nice compact inside out swing there. He has had some nights against the Knights. He had that two-run homer yeah. against him in the sectional a couple of years ago that set the stage for the for Jace Lee, Lee walk-off. Walk yep. Yeah, Van Fleet been a very nice addition for this St. Joe Husky team a couple years ago. and Really has performed well. And the curveball misses outside to Brady Loniger, who singled his first time up. And Loniger came in with a 389 average. Inside, it got a piece of him, and the bases are loaded for the top of the lineup. And there's danger here, Sherry, and action in the night bullpen. Looks like Marion's got Patty Kiefer down there warming up right now at the moment. We saw Kiefer throw in the pen broadcast that we did last year on TV 46. And he may be needed in a hurry here as St. Joe gets to the third time through the order here with Joe Washburn, who has a single and a fielder's choice. Corner infielders are in, the middle infielders back. Washburn takes the breaking ball inside for ball one. Base is loaded, nobody out. St. Joe down two here in the bottom of the third. Outside corner with a fastball, and it's one and one. Washburn has a nine-game hit streak now after that infield hit back in the first. It dates back to last season. He takes that one down low, and it's two and one. Really good eye by Washburn right there. That low fastball trying to get that ground ball. He's a smart kid, a 4.2 GPA. 2-1 pitch. Swing in the line, drive center field. Oliver going back, it's over his head. One run is in, two runs are gonna score. Smolinski's going to set another to the plate, the throw high, and St. Joe has the lead, 7-6. And the Husky faithful are on their feet at Pajikowski Field as you get another look from Tony Letcher, Matt Tolman, and Health Markets. What a great swing by Washburn. Just sitting back, driving that ball to center field. And what do the Knights get in return for that? After that, they get Jay Slee committed to Notre Dame coming up with nobody out. The throw was high, and that's what allowed Washburn to go into third base. But a three-run double for Joe Washburn. And all of a sudden, St. Joe has rallied from a five-run deficit to lead this one 7-6. There you see Patty Kiefer trying to get hot in a hurry in the Marion Penn. Lee with a fielder's choice, and then he struck out swinging in the second. Bays has baffled him with the curve today, and he throws him another one there that misses outside for ball one. 
Washburn, a terrific base runner at third, and there's a lot of room behind home plate here if one were to get away from Schmittendorf. The breaking ball is on the inside corner, and the count one and one. Chase Bays staring in. Battle of D1 commits right here. Bays headed to Eastern Illinois and Lee going to Notre Dame. The pitch. Breaking ball, another beauty in there, and it's one and two. And somewhere Clint Eastwood is looking because there's trouble with the curve. Chase just trying to sit on a fastball. I'm not sure if he's going to get one or not. Missed outside with that bender, and it's two and two. Would you throw him one? I might try to maybe sneak one, but I'm not putting it anywhere close to the zone. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, th I think I would stick with the curve based on his reaction so far. 2-2 two -two pitch. There it is. Swing and a miss. Strike three. One down here in the third, and here's Owen Balance. TireRack.com is proud to serve as the scoreboard sponsor for the TV46 Game of the Week. Since 1979, TireRack has been helping people find the right tires for how, what, where, and they drive. They're also well known for supporting the Michiana community. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Balint takes one in the back from Bays, and now runners at the corners with one away for Brett Mason. And we'll get the courtesy runner here as Luke Short will come on. To run for Owen Balin. And Balin was more than happy to let Chase Bays know that didn't hurt. You have to appreciate that Brett Mason uses Sade as his walk up song. And if he's going to be a smooth operator, he may not get the chance to do it here against Chase Bays because Joe Turnock is on his way to the mound and taking a look to the pen. We'll see if he makes a pitching change. Indeed he will. And we'll take a break and tell you about Patty Key for the new Marion Hurler when we come back. 7-6 St. Joe here in the bottom of the third on 46. Welcome into the Reliance booth. Reliance will build, design, and renovate. And right now, Marion doing some renovation at the pitching spot with Patty Kiefer coming in. What can you tell us about this young man? Well, Patty just got two innings on the year so far. Um, just got back with the team and everything. Fastballs. You're going to see fastballs, fastball. And now he's going to be, you know, high 80s, trying to touch that 90 mark. And he's just going to stay with it and uh, try to get uh, Marion out of this inning. He also has a slider and a changeup in the repertoire. A year ago, Kiefer was 4-1 with a 3.85 ERA. In 11 games, he threw 40 innings with 49 strikeouts and 25 walks. So Patty's going to come in and actually uh, Gardini is who was staying at second who was at second and the dh okay so the new rule is you can put designate somebody as the dh so patty will actually come in for him and gardini will actually move gardini comes out chase bays is going in to play second base and right gardini now. will be the dh okay very good thanks for explaining that to yep. us the rules in high school baseball focused more uh, about participation than anything else. And the reason we have a delay here is, well, Patty Kiefer's wearing a bracelet today, and you can't do that, so the trainer has to come out from the St. Joe dugout and say, you know that nice bracelet somebody gave you? It's, it's done. It's over with. Ivy Tech credits transfer to more than 100 colleges and universities in Indiana and outside the state. They offer more than 20 degrees, qualifying for guaranteed admission at the largest four-year institutes in the state with classes that fit your busy schedule, in-person, online, and in-between. Enrollment is open. Visit ivytech.edu slash apply. Brett Mason shows butt, takes a strike, and it's a stolen base for Owen Balin who takes advantage of the fact that there were runners on first and third and Schmittendorf didn't want to throw down there because Joe Washburn would have scored another run. 
As it is now, there's two in scoring position for Mason, the leading RBI man on this St. Joe team coming into the action tonight. The pitch outside on the heater, and it's one and one. Kiefer last year threw a complete game against New Prairie, a pretty good hitting team typically. Did that on April 24th and beat the Cougars 2-0. New Prairie locked in one over at Four Winds Field tonight as they take on the John Adams Eagles on this Jackie Robinson night. Here comes the 1-1. Swing and a miss, and it's 1-2. All and two strikes the count on the St. Joe left fielder. Runners at second and third. The Huskies up 7-6. Fastball missed outside. Two and two. Definitely more giddy up on the Kiefer fastball than what we saw from Bays. Yeah. His problem sometimes is harnessing it. Yeah, that, I think that's one of the biggest things with uh, Patty is trying to locate that and, and uh, throw strikes as well. Here comes the 2-2. That's on the outside corner. He stood there like the house by the side of the road and watched it go by. A strikeout for Kiefer. And there's two away now here in the third, and here's Owen Fuda. Fuda walking a K tonight. Kiefer trying to get Marion out of this without any further damage. The pitch outside on the fastball. It's one and zero. I do like the stirrup game though for Patty Kiefer. He does make a statement with that, doesn't he? The stripes showing right below the knees. Stirrups pulled up high. Everybody else has their pants down by the shoe tops, but Kiefer wearing it the old-fashioned way, and it's two and zero. There you see the marked difference. 2-0 the count on Fuda. Tried to throw a breaking pitch there, and Fuda watched that one go outside, and it's 3-0. And the guy that started this whole mess for St. Joe here in the third, Brody Zielinski, waits on deck. And he'll get a chance to bat here with the bases loaded. Zelensky with a single and a double so far tonight. And he really has a chance to do some damage here. Yeah, he's definitely having a solid night for this St. Joe Husky team on the mound now, settling down that last inning and at the plate especially. Seven hits in his last 13 at bats. He takes that one outside for ball one. And he has done some damage with, at the plate against Marion in the past. He's five out of 13 now against the Knights in his career. Outfield playing Zielinski to swing a little late against Kiefer. But Kiefer's got to find the zone. That's six straight outside the mark, and it's 2-0. Ace is loaded, two away, here in the bottom of the third. The pitch. Swing, he chased one outside the zone, and it's two and one. He was looking dead right on that 2-0 pitch, waiting for that fastball. He got it, but a little away. Washburn at third. Short at second, Fuda at first, the pitch. There's a strike on the outside corner, and it's two and two. Deuce is wild out there on the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, and two away with the bases loaded in a key situation in this one. And Kiefer got strike three call. That pitch had a little wiggle in it, and that backdoor slider came over the outside corner. 
As you get another look from Tony Letcher and Matt Tallman Health Market, still it's a 7-6 St. Joe lead as we go downstairs to Angelo DiCarlo for a Bills heating sideline report. Well, Coach, you are down 6-1, and you quickly erase that deficit. Your thoughts on the first three innings here in the Holy War? I'm proud of our guys. We're battling each inning right now. You know, I'm looking at it by inning by inning. Our goal is to win each inning, and that was a great inning for us right there. You know, we're putting the ball in play and executing. I talked to Coach Chernuk about his 7, 8, 9 hitters. Your 6, 7, 8, 9 hitters are 6 of 8 tonight with five runs scored. How much does that help your team? You know, that's huge for us. You know, those guys are stepping up. You know, it's not going to always be the top of the order for us. And, you know, just putting the ball in play, force them to make plays. And, you know, right now it's a battle. It's going to be that way the rest of the game. Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Chuck and Bo, back to you. All right, and this is a key game in the NIC because everybody in pursuit of the Penn Kingsman, as you might expect, Greg Dykus' team, the defending 4A state champs, off to another good start. Marion could really use this one to stay in the hunt. And Adams, as we mentioned, playing New Prairie down at Four Winds Field. But everybody's got to stay within striking distance. And St. Joe, well, they're not even on the chart there because they're 0-1. If you start off in the NIC 0-2, you oh, yeah. are not catching them. No, that's one of the things. You get to two losses in this conference with some of those top, top dogs, especially Penn. It's hard to win this conference. Good. So Brody Zelensky's had a difficult sandwich night here. He's had some meat on the outside, but uh, got kicked in the bun in the <laughs> second inning, giving up six. Get ready to start the fourth inning, brought to you by Peter Horvath Law. The Horvath family is all in on Marion High School. Jackson and Prescott are Curtin students, while Kayla and Atticus are Marion grads. Their dad, Peter, wants to set up their future and your future of your kids. He's a local lawyer specializing in estate planning. Prepare your family's future by contacting Peter Horvath Law today. Great to have him on the team tonight. Silvio Gardini with a ground ball diving stop by Hardesty at first, but the throw dropped by Zelinski. And that'll be an error on the St. Joe pitcher. Hardesty makes a sparkling defensive play at first base to come up with this one. And the throw's right on the money. Zelinski just didn't walk, look it into his glove. He was looking to see where the base was. Yeah, it's one of those where you catch the ball and then you find the base. Catch the ball first, then find the base. And you have to know that errors have been a problem for the St. Joe team here in 2024 as Carrillo stands in and lays down a bunt. Back to the mound, Zelensky will throw this one to first for the out. And the sacrifice goes 1-3. But this St. Joe team has now made 15 errors in just seven games this season. And coming into the action tonight, of the 35 runs that they allowed, only 19 of them were earned. Just about half there. And now the top of the order up with J.J. Oliver, who's 0 for 2 tonight, a pair of flyouts. He'll bounce this one up the middle. Washburn can't get it. It's in the center field, a base hit. Lee wanted to show off the gun, but nobody coming home. So there's runners at the corners with one away. J.J. getting a base hit, long overdue for J.J. He's had a struggle on his lately. J.J., though, over the years, has had success against the Knights. He's, or the St. Joe squad. He's 9 out of 23 against St. Joe in his illustrious career. And here's Chase Bays trying to make amends and get his team back to even or maybe even back in front. He had a three-run triple back in the second. And he smacks this one in the left field, and we're knotted up at seven. Had a feeling the way this game started and kept going, we might have a pretty high-scoring game here before it, things start settling down. Uh, we've done a few St. Joe Marion games that have been 7-7, but usually they're on the gridiron. This one on the baseball diamond, and we're only in the fourth. Here's Bryce Lesane, who singled in a run his last time up. Two on, one out. Fastball swinging a miss as Zelensky blew that one by him. Lesane, all in I see, first team third baseman as a sophomore. Pickoff play at second, but diving back in safely is Oliver. Really nice set play there between the catcher, the pitcher, and the shortstop on a timing pickoff. 
Lassane had six RBI the other night against Bremen. Couldn't come up with a fastball there. It's nothing in two. So Zelensky has worked him with two straight heaters. Do you stay with it here? Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, it's up. And so he's swinging at that up. You, when you do that, you just keep going up and up and up. And so he's got to be a little bit higher and see if he lays off this. Well, the target's low, and it's a one-hopper off the knee of the second baseman and back in the left field. The go-ahead run will score. It's 8-7, Marion. Wow, what a tough play there. Longinger at second. Hard hit ball. Ball scooted off his knee. Now the back. I'm inclined at the high school level to give a base hit on that, even though it was right at him. Yeah, it's one of those where that's just such a tough play at the high school level. The fields aren't the best like Major League. I mean, Major League grass fields are like turf. You, know? <laughs> you don't get a bad hop. The pitch to Schmittendorf, oh. and that's ripped deep to left field. Mason looking up, it's into the corner and down the line. One run is in, Lassane will hold it third. It's an RBI double for Schmittendorf, 9-7 Marion. Wow, Schmittendorf really turned on that fastball, pulled that thing down the line, just barely stayed fair the way that wind was blowing and holding it up. A two-bagger for Schmittendorf. And Brody Zielinski, the odd innings have been great. The even innings, not so much. And Cole Hunt lifts one into the sky to right field. Van Fleet coming over in foul territory, makes the one-hand grab. Lassane will tag from third and score. Going over to third is Schmittendorf. It is now a 10-7 Marion Lee. Boy, Cole just missed that one going fair. Got it up Number deep five. enough, did his job getting Lassane in. At any point of your Van Fleet, do you consider letting that drop ball drop in foul territory? I, later in the game. Okay. It, later in the game, that's one of those things where you wait, um, you know, middle of the order or something like that. You take the out at this point. Evan Maloney comes in as a courtesy runner, a third for Schmittendorf, and a breaking ball here is a little bit high to Jake Oliver, who has a sack bunt and a strikeout so far. Ten seven, Marion leads it, swinging a miss on a bender there, and the count goes to one and one. Zelinsky trying to gut his team through four innings, but there is action out in the uh, St. Joe bullpen as this ball is taken down the left field line, but foul, and the count goes to one and two. Jane Newber warming up for the Huskies down beyond the third base line. One and two to Jake Oliver. The pitch, fastball down the middle for a called third strike. And the inning is over, but not before the Marion Knights get four runs on four hits and an error. And they leave a man, and we're halfway home at Pajakowski Field with Marion leading 10-7. Our Tony Letcher Health Market Student Athletes of the Night of the week are next on 46. Time now for our 46 student athletes of the week presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. We have Molly Belia, state champion tennis player and the valedictorian in the St. Joe senior class along with Evan Schmindorf, a Marion senior catcher who has a 4.443 GPA, first team all NIC baseball player. How do you balance it all between academics and playing baseball? Well, a lot of it's just really hard work. Um, being able to balance baseball with school is a very hard thing because, you know, lots of late nights, but you got to get used to no sleep. So. You want to be a doctor one day. What kind of doctor? Why do you want to be a doctor? Well, I wanted to be a doctor because, well, most of the people in my family say that I'm really good with people, and I think that's the great avenue for it. And uh, I don't know what type of doctor I want to be yet, but that's the plan right now. What does being a Marion Knight mean to you? Well, being a Marion Knight's uh, a community over anything, and the, the opportunities that I get being at Marion are not a lot of kids get the same opportunities, so I got to enjoy while I have it, you know. Evan, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Molly Belia, the senior tennis player, state champion as a freshman, 
now the valedictorian this year. And I make sure I sneak this in for Coach McCarthy, also all NIC in cross country. Uh, let's start with being valedictorian of your senior class. What does that honor mean to you? It's a great honor. Um, you know, all the teachers at St. Joe, I'm so grateful for, you know, how much they've given me, how much support they've given me, um, everything that I've learned there. Um, that's the most important thing to me. I'm just really grateful um, and honored to have had that opportunity. You're headed to the U.S. Naval Academy. You're going to play tennis there and also major in chemistry. I think this is obvious. Navy's a great place, but tell us why that in, in particular and how excited you are to play college tennis. Um, I really like the service opportunities there. Um, that means something to me for sure. Um, and the community there is incredible. Um, you know, the coaches, teammates, everyone else that I met there. Um, I just, I felt like I really fit in and it's just the place for me, so I'm excited. You too want to be a doctor one day. Why is that and what kind of doctor do you want to be? Um, I just think that it's a really cool way to serve people. You know, I've had injuries in the past and um, I've had doctors who have been crucial in, you know, giving me the right kind of care, but also, you know, having the right persona around me. Um, it's really meant a lot to me, so I want to be able to give that to other people too. You kind of mentioned this in the beginning, but what does representing St. Joe mean to you? Um, you know, I think representing St. Joe's community really means, um, you know, leading through service. Um, uh, they emphasize service so much, and, you know, it's become so ingrained in all of us that um, I think that's something that I really want to carry forward into my life. Molly, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Molly Balea, Evan Schmindorf, two brainiacs from Marion and St. Joe, future doctors, our 46 student athletes of the week, presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. We've got your fifth inning action right after this on TV 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Crown Trophy. They're nationally known and locally owned. So now Patty Kiefer staked to a 10-7 lead here for Marion as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Wild game here at Pachikowski Field. Glad you're with us here on TV 46. Holden Hardesty will lead it off. He's one for two tonight. Single and a run scored back in that third inning. And he takes a strike here from Kiefer. Well, and the thing is, 17 runs scored against two three of the top pitchers in the area as well. So definitely these two teams can hit. Fastball misses way outside and the count one and one. All the runs in this game so far for St. Joe charged to the starter Chase Bays. The one one coming to Hardesty. Two balls to strike on Holden. He extended his hit streak to five games with his single back in the third. That pitch misses outside, and Kiefer falls behind three and one. And boy, that's been a problem for all the pitchers here tonight. There's no better pitch in the repertoire than strike one, but we haven't seen it a whole lot. That is true. Swing and a miss here, and it's three and two. Full count. Kiefer with that high handed wind up. Gets a pop up on the right side. Bays is calling for it. And the second baseman has to go to his knee to make the catch. Again, up in that sun a little bit. High sky. It's a tough play there. There are no clouds to be seen in this sky tonight. And you're looking directly into the sun over on the right side of this field here at Pajakowski Field. Here's Ben Van Fleet, who has a pair of doubles and two runs scored tonight. He hits one in the air to right center field here. Carrillo, though, underneath this one and able to make the two-hand grab. Reminder, this fourth inning is sponsored by Peter Horvath Law. Planning and preparation are important in life when it comes to estate planning. Peter Horvath Law will get you prepared. Need a will, trust? Living will or power of attorney, Peter is ready to advise and support you in protecting your assets and passing them on to your family. Learn more at PeterHorvathLaw.com and go Knights. Brady Loniger stepping in. And Loniger takes a strike. 
He's been on base both times tonight. Scored a run as part of that third inning outburst. And a strike there. It's nothing in two. He's got that nice little movement on that pitch. Starts on that outside corner, comes back across the plate a little bit. This is the first inning. St. Joe didn't get the leadoff man on base. And Kiefer trying to make sure nobody gets on base here in the fourth. One and two, the count. Swing and a miss, he got him. Kiefer goes one, two, three through the Huskies here in the fourth. And after four at Pachakowski Field, Marion leads at 10 7 on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by Reliance. Design, build, renovate. And you see our 46 crew on hand here at Panchakowski Field tonight as we bring you this high school baseball action. The first of three high school baseball games we'll bring you right in a row here in our spring showcase. As we check out the spring schedule, you'll see we're headed on over to Mishawaka next week for NLC action, Northridge and Mishawaka. And then we will also have an NLC game the following week with Goshen Northwood. St. Joe softball gets featured in that huge NIC game with Penn. And we finish up with the girls track sectional and the boys track regional. Should be an exciting spring here on TV 46. Lots of action in this one tonight as Marion leads at 10-7 here in the fifth. And a little slice over to the third baseman, Fuda, who throws to first and threw it away. And that'll allow the hitter, Michael Prisgoda, to cruise on into second on the Fuda error. This fifth inning brought to you by Marion High School. Different gifts, the same spirit, one body. This unifying message taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is being lived out daily by the students and faculty at Marion High School. Please visit marionhs.org to learn more about Marion's mission. Errors, the last two innings have really hurt St. Joe. They dropped a throw over at first base to start the fourth. And here in the fifth, they put a runner in scoring position for Silvio Gardini, the DH. As you see the pickoff attempt fail. A beautiful 70 degree night here in South Bend. A bunt up the Ooh, third wow. base side, and that's going to be a base hit. Second base hit, first two of his high school career on the varsity for Gardini. He couldn't have gone out there and set it down any better than that. And now runners at the corners with nobody out for Brian Carrillo, who is one for one tonight. He has a single and a sacrifice bunt. St. Joe looking for a strikeout right here. And strikeouts for St. Joe are sponsored by Crimmins Carpet Services. Their father and son owned and operated in South Bend for over 35 years. The team is dedicated to providing our customers with quality cleaning and repairs. Zelensky looks the runner back to third, but the sacrifice, the second one by Carrillo tonight, puts two in scoring position for the top of the order. And J.J. Oliver delivered the last time with a single. He's one for three. Crimmins Carpet Services not only do cleaning for St. Joe, but Joe Crimmins and his sister, Samantha and Danielle, are alum. Remember, it's not clean till it's Crimmins clean. Go, St. Joe. Zelensky, ground ball by Oliver, backhanded by Washburn. He really has no play, or did he get him? He did. Oh, what a throw by Washburn. Wow. I thought by the time he looked at third and then had to pivot back to first, he would not be able to get Oliver, who's got some decent wheels. But it's an RBI oh, ground out for J.J., and it's an 11-7 game. Yeah, just a great job, the arm strength that Washburn has over there at short. So runner on third, two away, and a swing and a miss there by Chase Bays. Bays is two for three. A three-run triple in the second, an RBI single in the fourth, and he fouls that one straight back to go down in the count, nothing in two. But another unearned run given up by St. Joe here.
The 0-2 rifled foul past Joe Turnock, who does a pretty mean hula down there in the third base coach's box. Yeah, that's one of those where you don't hop out of the way. You just got to lean out of the way. Still nothing in two on base. Breaking ball, spanked to the third baseman, Fuda. He fields it cleanly, throws, and gets him. And the inning is over. But uh, another run tacked on by the Marion Knights. Uh, one hit, a key error, and one left. Fifth inning stretch time at the patch with Marion leading 11-7 on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Ben Soft Pretzels. They're serving our community one pretzel at a time, and they sponsor our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question. We want to know the former St. Joe pitcher who became a Major League All-Star. John Gump. Uh, no. No. Not, <laughs> not a pitcher at St. Joe. He, he was the coach of their state championship team. Yes, he was. 2017. Johnny Smolinski was an assistant coach on that squad, but... I will tell you that this gentleman uh, was a classmate of Terry McFadden at St. Joe. How about that? Gives you a little bit of an era. Lely Art Insurance Agency in Osceola believes in the importance of high school sports. They are locally owned and can assist with all your insurance needs. Visit realvalueins.com to learn more. Lily Art Insurance, real people, real service, real value. Top of the order coming up for St. Joe against Patty Kiefer here on the fifth. It'll start with Joe Washburn, who's been on base all three times tonight. A single, a double, and a fielder's choice. Three run double back in the third for Washburn, which elevates his RBI total to seven for the season. Washburn shows butt, takes a pitch inside for ball one. I had Bryce Lesane on the move down there at third. Lesane playing back the cut of the grass anyway. And yeah, Washburn takes that one inside, 2 0. Oh. I feel compelled to tell you with this center field angle, our camera is a little bit lower than it normally would be out in center field. That's the best we could do. And so it makes Kiefer look like a giant compared to Joe Washburn. <laughs> Patty's got some size, but he's not, not that much taller than Joe. Yeah. 3-0 the count. But there's a lot of slope to the outfield here at St. Joe because there's a marsh right behind the center field fence that the water naturally drains to. So the count now 3-1. Not a lot we can do a lot of times with the high school setups. They're not necessarily set up for TV. No, they're not. <laughs> this is all new to them, too. Three and two, the count on Washburn. But we appreciate Kevin Mackey, the maintenance guy at St. Joe, and all the work he's done is that one got a piece of Washburn, more than a piece, and he'll go down to first on the hit by pitch. Reminder, this fifth uh, inning brought to you by Marion Lawrence. High School. Different gifts, the same spirit, one body. This unifying message taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is being lived out daily by the students and faculty at Marion High School. Please visit marionhs.org to learn more about Marion's mission. Evan Schmittendorf going to the mound. Bo, I think this mound conversation might be simply... Hey, I know you like your fastball a lot, but we've had a lot of success against this guy with curveballs tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's one of those things. And if you are going to throw it, don't throw it right across the middle of the plate. So a lot of really quick hands by Jace Lee looking to really break out of that slump he's kind of had. But again, he's just been a couple weeks out of that basketball season going on that state championship run that he did with that team. The pitch down low on the heater, and it's ball one. Lee, a rare athlete, all in IC in both baseball and basketball. And he had a game-winning walk-off homer in the sectional final two years ago to beat Marion. Prep Baseball Indiana made him a preseason 3A All-State selection, and understandably so. A lot of tools that he has. Yeah, Johnny Smolinski says he's a five-tool player. 
Hits one on the ground here, but it hit his foot first. It's a foul ball. And the count one and one. If you're looking to build a new home and renovate or renovate your current home, contact Reliance, serving Northern Indiana and Southwest Michigan. Reliance has a reputation for excellence year after year. Visit reliancedbr.net for more info. Reliance, design, build, renovate. The 1-1 one -one instead Kiefer throws to first because Washburn has shown tonight that he's a stolen base threat. He has two already this evening and 10 on the season. Washburn holds and Lee pops it up into right field. Carrillo drifting under it, still drifting and makes the catch. Reminiscent of a ball that Lee hit at Mishawaka Friday night that Johnny Smolinski said went 350 feet all straight up <laughs> and dropped in. He said we wound up giving an error on the play because the shortstop really should have had it, but it was a key play in that game. In that game, yes, it was. One away, here's Owen Bayland. He's been on base all three times. Single walk and hit by pitch. Patty really working Washburn over there at first base. Balint bat 405 last season. The average 286 this year. He takes a strike here and it's nothing in one. But he's had some key hits in his career for St. Joe, including both the game tying and game winning hits last year in their upset of Penn during the regular season. Yeah, he had a big game and that day against Penn, been very solid catcher for uh, this St. Joe Husky team. Co-captain of the squad. The 0-1 from Kiefer. There goes Washburn, and he picked a great pitch. He threw him a breaking ball that missed inside, and Schmittendorf could have had a howitzer and never got it. No, he just picked a great pitch. As you said, Kiefer has only thrown a few curveballs here tonight, and he picked a great one to go on. Third stolen base of the night for Joe Washburn. And he's in scoring position now for Balin. Huskies trailing by four here in the fifth. Outside with the fastball, and it's two and one. Ben Soft Pretzels have been supporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education. And we're proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzels at the University Park Mall and at most major Notre Dame athletic events. Have a pretzel day. Ground ball foul to the Husky dugout. It's two and two. Brett Mason waits in the on-deck circle. You see Washburn at second. Outfield playing Balint to pull, showing some respect for the pop in this young man's bat. Solidly put together athlete. And Owen wants a little time after Kiefer was juggling the ball on the mound. That one misses outside, it's three and two. Balint has done some damage over the years against the Knights. He has six RBI in his career against Marion. Looking for number seven right here. The payoff pitch from Kiefer. Driven to left center field and deep. Back goes the center fielder, Jacob Oliver, and he makes the catch. And there's two away. That was one of the better hit balls of the night, but it went now to the deepest part of the park. So with two down, let's answer our Ben Soft Pretzel trivia question. We asked you the former St. Joe pitcher who became a major league all-star. If you're a Cubs fan, you're going to say, which Steve Onaveros are they talking about? No, not the no. one that played third base for the Cubs, but the one that pitched for Oakland back in the 90s and late 80s and was a member of the 1995 American League all-star team. Wound up sticking around the bigs for... About nine, ten nine, years. Nine, ten years, yeah. Here's Brett Mason, the junior, batting 381, is one for two tonight. He had a sack fly back in the first. And he foul tips this one in the mid of Schmittendorf. And the count's nothing to one. 
Mason was the first batter that Kiefer faced back in the third inning. And he fooled him. And that has set Patty on his way. Hasn't given up a run in relief yet. St. Joe knocking at the door. Washburn goes. Schmittendorf's throw is high. And Washburn slides under the tag with his fourth stolen base of the night. Ivy Tech programs are made to prepare students for great careers and high-paying, high-demand jobs. Find the program meant for advancing you toward your career quickly and affordable. Classes that fit your busy life, in-person, online, and in-between. Enrollment is open. Visit ivytech.edu slash apply. That fastball misses outside. That's where Schmittendorf set the target. Kiefer hit it. Mason didn't go chasing in the count one and two. Kiefer delivers. Breaking ball fouled out of play. Still one and two. St. Joe with a big weekend of baseball coming up. They will go down state and play in a tournament with Garen Catholic, Lafayette Central Catholic, and Highland this weekend. So Johnny Smolinski's team is certainly going to get tested this week on the diamond. Fastball called strike three. Mason knew it. And he'll head back to the dugout as Keeper racks up his fourth strikeout of the evening. And after five here at Pajakowski Field, it's Marion 11, St. Joe 7. Let's go downstairs for a Bills heating sideline report. Angelo DiCarlo has himself a special guest. Yeah, we're here with St. Joe senior Nolan Dubricki, who is... Uh really overcame a lot in his life. This is a young man who had to have a bone marrow transplant back in 2015, had to receive a kidney from his dad. Take us back to those days and how difficult it was, Nolan, for you. Uh, it was really difficult, actually, because baseball was, like, was my main sport growing up, and at my time is where I knew a lot of my friends, and it was just what I was really good at. And growing up, like, progressively, it seemed that I peaked at a younger age than as when you get better as you grow older. But for me, I kind of stopped around sophomore year after my kidney transplant. I really kind of plateaued. You did eventually get to play baseball again. What, what, did, what has that experience meant to you to be able to return? I know you're not playing anymore right now this year, but to be able to get back out there after all you've been through, what, what did that mean to you? Uh, it feels good. It keeps me going, and it brings me a smile to be around my teammates, and knowing that me being here is just enough. How do you use this to stay positive? I, I mean, you've gone through a lot. It's got to be difficult. Um, how do you stay positive through all this? Uh, I just know that my mom and my dad have always told me that, like, there's a lot of people that have it way worse than me, and fighting for that is I've seen them in the hospital being way worse and just knowing that some kids don't have a second chance like I do, and they don't have the fight. And I know you're not able to play the rest of this season, but tell us, how are you doing overall? Uh, I'm feeling a lot better. I was feeling pretty crummy last week, but I'm feeling great. And the weather's nice out, so it's still good to be out here. And we have a lot of our students out here, which doesn't happen much, and it feels great. All right, Nolan, thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you. Chuck and Bo, what an inspirational young man. Back up to you guys. Absolutely. As you take a look at Jay Newber, the new St. Joe pitcher, 5.25 ERA so far. Marion coming to bat here in the sixth, leading 11-7. And a strike taken on the outside corner by Bryce Lassane, who's two for three. Lassane with a pair of singles. But Nolan DeBrucki, what terrific perspective from uh, that young man for the adversity that he yep. has faced. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody knows that I'm the father of somebody who had a bone marrow transplant. But, you know, we're fortunate. That's all she had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, he yeah. is, he's yeah. just had... And the sale of illnesses and adversity and to have that. that great outlook. Lassane slices one the other way. It's still one and two. Sixth inning brought to you by Marin Products. They've been known for meeting customer metal forming needs for more than 50 years. They support both high schools playing tonight, but they're very big fans of Marion coach Joe Turnock and his Knights. Learn more at MarinProducts.com. Lassane golfs one foul past the Husky dugout. It's still one and two. Great to have Marion Products back on the team again. They have been terrific sponsors of Marion Athletics over the years here on TV 46. The one two missing outside, it's two and two. 
Lassane headed to Triton Junior College. What do you know about that place, Bo? I know quite a bit about it. Our friend Kevin Putz went to Triton Junior College as well and uh, went to the College World Series. Actually got runner-up with uh, Chris Havens, was a pitcher from Elkhart uh, Memorial Cent Central. Central. Central as well. So uh, uh, very good school. I was very close to actually going there myself. Uh, they had football at the time when I was in school, but they were eliminating the football program. Lassane grounds one into center field for a base hit. His third hit of the night. And Bryce Lassane, who came into the action tonight, hitting 414, <laughs> doing nothing to hurt the cause here. Interested in getting your son or daughter participating in a top-notch travel baseball or softball team? The Land Sharks has teams ranging from 8U to 18U. They hold tryouts in mid-July. Learn more by visiting shkbaseball.com. Lassane well, now 15 of 33 hitting this year. The leadoff man aboard again for Evan Schmittendorf. And he takes that one down low. Marion has had the leadoff man on in four of the six innings, and every time the leadoff man's been on, the Knights have scored. This one's lined into center field. Lee on his horse, but he can't get there. This one goes all the way to the wall. Schmittendorf heads into second. He's got himself another double. His second two-bagger of the night. Great job of just staying through that ball, driving it to center field. Looked like Jace Lee had a beat on it there for a second. But that ball just carried too far. He kept slicing away from Lee, and he couldn't catch up with it. Infield coming in for St. Joe here. 13 hits for the Knights tonight as Cole Hunt stands in there. And that one way outside. Bayland had to really stretch for that one. 1-0. One oh. Hunt with a single, a fly out to left, and a sacrifice fly. Cole takes that one outside, and the count goes to 2-0. and oh. Situation here, nobody out, first and third infield in. You're looking to just really something that you take out of the ordinary, and you're really looking to draw or pull the ball as a lefty in this situation, really drive that ball to right field. Five out of his last 11 at the plate, but he hasn't seen anything worth swinging at yet. It's 3-0. and oh. Jake Oliver waits on deck. The 3-0 from Newber, taking all the way for ball four. The bases are loaded. Now up to bat number five, Jake. It'll bring up Jake Oliver. He is 0 for 2 officially tonight. And I think Joe Turnock might be considering using a Pinch. courtesy runner here for Hunt. It looks like he's bringing in Bennett. So indeed, Caden Bennett will be the pinch runner over at first base for Cole Hunt. Cole surprised that they didn't want his lightning speed <laughs> on the bases. I was waiting for him to actually do that before he did it. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where you uh, late in the game, you go ahead and use a guy in this situation, nobody out, so you're trying to stay out of that double play is what you're really trying to stay out of in this situation. Infield in as Oliver takes inside for ball one, and that's five straight outside the strike zone for Jay Newber. Newber with a fastball right around 82. He also throws a curve. There's the heater on the outside corner, and it's one and one. It's only thrown four innings this year, 1-0 record, 5.25 ERA. But in a big jam here, bases loaded, nobody out. Outside corner friendly there, and it's 1-2. and two. Got a little call there. One thing Oliver wasn't really hoping for in this situation. Again, great situation for him to really get things going off for the year for him. And the 1-2 skips away from Bayland on all the way to the backstop, and it's a wild pitch that allows Lusane to score and up the Marion ante to 12-7. 
Yeah. Everybody moves up 90 feet. This game's health tip is brought to you by HealthLink. There's no better way to make sure your athlete is ready to play than with a sports physical. Call HealthLink and schedule an appointment today. HealthLink offers medical, dental, vision, and more. It's Newber's second wild pitch of the season. That breaking ball misses low, and it's 3-2. and two. So the 3-2 pitch. Rifled foul and out of play. We'll do it all over again. Michael Prisgoda waits on deck. Newber working from the windup with runners on base. And he walked another one. When are, when are we talked uh, about with St. Joe? If they do have one little weak area, it's kind of maybe their number two, number three pitchers, finding that go-to guy. Who can we go to after Zielinski? Who can come in and, and just shut teams down or give us good quality innings? Lots of times they will go to Tommy Eck in those situations, but they used him for four innings the other night against Mishawaka. Mishawaka. So his freshness is not necessarily terrific right now although there is action out there in the St. Joe bullpen and I believe that is the aforementioned Tommy Eck. Did you know the former Marion girls basketball coach Steve Scott has been painting homes for 25 years whether it's interior or exterior classic touch painting provides reasonable prices and reliable service contact Steve Scott at 574-276-4504 that's 276-4504. So you see the left-handed stick of Michael Prisgoda standing in. He is one for three tonight. Single, pop out to short, and he reached and scored on an error in the third, or excuse me, in the fifth. Newber catching that outside corner for strike one, getting ahead early in the count on Prisgoda. And that one fouled away, and now it's nothing in two. For Marion, they turn around and play another sectional foe this week when they take on Jimtown Wednesday. And a big showdown over at Westview on the weekend against a strong Warrior squad. Got the Engel brothers and Engel relatives and Hostetlers and a <laughs> very good squad over Wait, there. Wait, there's some Hostetlers yeah. over on Westview? Yeah. Who knew? Jason Ron's got a really good staff. I've Good friend of mine played many uh, competitive games against him in sectionals, and he puts together some squads over there, that's for sure. Well, there's quite a bit of talent in the area this year. Oh, northern Indiana is just swamped with some talent between the junior and senior class and a couple sophomores as well, especially at Penn with Stockbridge and Hawk over there. As the count goes full on Prescota, there's nowhere to put him. The base is loaded with nobody out. Newber has walked back-to-back -back batters. And the junior trying to settle himself down right here. And Prisgota sat on the fastball but fouled it away. He had the feeling one was coming and just got a little over-anxious. So the runners will reset. With a 3-2 count here on Prisgota here in the top of the sixth. Fastball missed upstairs, and Newber walks in a run. It's 13-7, Marion. Three straight walks for Newber now. Now at the bat, number seven, Silvio Gardini. And that's going to do it for Jay Newber's day as Johnny Smolinski is on his way to the mound. Tommy Eck getting ready to come in from the bullpen. We'll tell you about him when we come back here on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by HealthLink, your community health center. Third pitcher of the evening for the St. Joe Huskies is Tommy Eck. You see a pretty nice ERA there of 1.62. Eck is making his fourth appearance of the season, one and one record. He's thrown eight and two thirds innings. Eight runs, only two of them earned. 12 strikeouts, seven hits, and three walks. He threw four innings, striking out eight Friday in 
the win over Mishawaka. And we go downstairs for a Bills heating sideline report. Angelo, you're very familiar with the work of Tommy Eck, but everybody's familiar with the Eck family here at South Bend. A absolutely. Uh, Tommy Eck and his brothers, uh, his family overall, have represented St. Joe in the Holy War every single year in some sport since 2010. And so when you think about the lineage there, that's pretty remarkable. As for Tommy, yeah, one of my former interns at Redeemer Radio last year, uh, to show you how cool Common Collective he is as a young man, we had a, uh, my, well, I'll just say it, my daughter fell down the steps right before a game last year. I got the call, I ripped off the headsets and said, you guys figure it out. Tommy had to jump in and be the video producer, never having done it before, and Chuck, it was a perfect game. I didn't need to be there. Well, we what? say that often. <laughs> <laughs> X first pitch is on the outside corner for a strike to Silvio Gardini. Gardini with his first two hits of his varsity career tonight. So that triple zero, you see the average column, it's gone by the boards. He's two for three. And he wanted to chase that one, but held up the count one and one. Eck has been very effective as a pitcher for St. Joe. Last year, he pitched in 14 games, 3-0 and with a 2.40 ERA. 21 Ks, nine walks, that's not bad. Swing and a miss here by Gardini. He accidentally got a piece of Balint and apologizes to the Husky catcher and the count one and two. And that was on the follow through. If he would have got it before that, it would have been interference. Swing and a foul tip that Balint can't hang on to, so it remains one and two. Heck, really working this mound out here, getting in a good pace and really trying to go right at the batters. Of course, he's the quarterback on the football team for St. Joe. Swing and a miss at a pretty nice slider there from Mr. Eck. And the strikeout sponsored by Crimmins Carpet Services. One down here in the inning. Here's Brian Carrillo, who is one for one officially tonight. A single and two sacrifice bunts. Yeah, Carrillo's batting 250 on the year. Just another senior that's really come in and has played well last year. It's a sparing time. And done a great job especially I mean a guy like this down at the nine hole I mean he's got speed he's very versatile um, just really good to have somebody down there it can really bunt. I think he's got five sack bunts on the year well, I'm gonna ask you here with a count one and one Joe Turnock consider a squeeze bunt here well you do have a pinch runner at, at third base with not a lot of varsity playing time so not sure what you do in this situation if, or if you ever bunt in that situation valid point instead it's a chopper over the head of Eck his only play is at first and he gets the out there but it's an RBI ground out for Carrillo and ups the ante to 14-7 Marion now with the bat number three John Oliver it wasn't pretty but it got the run home as you see on the Tony Lutcher, Matt Tallman Health Markets replay. Runners at second and third now for J.J. Oliver. That one misses high and away. And J.J., one of four all NIC players in this game. Maybe we'll have a chance to show you after this pitch. Instead, it's bounced up the middle. Joe Washburn fields it, throws to first, and our plans are thwarted. Nevertheless, Marion picks up three more runs in the inning now. Just two hits, no errors, and two left. And they're going to the bottom of the sixth. St. Joe needs a touchdown and go for two. They're down seven on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to us by Tire Rack because TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. The Marion Knights have had a terrific bullpen performance tonight from Patty Kiefer, and he gets ready to go into the sixth now with a seven-run lead here at Pajakowski Field. You see a brilliant northern Indiana sunset here in the month of April. And Keeper has been equally brilliant and shining as bright as the sun tonight. The sixth inning brought to you by Marin Products. Marin Products has been known for meeting customer metal forming needs for more than 50 years. They support both schools playing tonight, but they're big fans of Coach Joe Turnock and the Marion Knights. Learn more at MarinProducts.com. Patty Kiefer came into this game 
back in the third inning with St. Joe leading seven to six. And he has shut down an Indian attack that battered about the starter, Chase Bays. He has fanned four, has hit a batter and walked a batter. But that's it. The Huskies haven't had a hit off Keeper yet. I think one of the biggest things is that fastball. There you can see him kind of taking a deep breath, settle himself down, don't overthrow that fastball. Round ball down the third baseline, backhanded by Lassane, but he has no play. Huskies finally do get a hit off Keeper. It's an infield single from Owen Fuda. That'll bring up Brady Zielinski. Brody Zielinski is the DH now after he left the game as a pitcher. And he's had a good night at the plate, two out of three. He pops this one high on the infield. Lassane, the third baseman, is able to make it. I was looking at the wind as I hit that one and realized the flag's not really blowing right now. It looks like it died down for the time being anyways. That was primarily how high in the sky that one was that gave the a yeah. little bit of trouble. Holden Hardesty comes up now. He's one for three tonight. Singleton scored back in the third. Marion grabbed a 6-1 lead in this game. St. Joe came back to get a 7-6 advantage, and the Knights have reeled off eight straight. Yeah, it's just been a little bit of back and forth, and Marion's finally been able to hold staff, and again, a lot of consideration for Patty Kiefer holding them to that spot. Breaking ball, missed low, and the count goes to 1-1 one one on Hardesty. Imaginary Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imaginary is always working toward a great finish. Thank you, Imaginary, for your continued support of high school sports on TV 46. Keeper, a senior. 3.7 GPA. And that fastball is on the inside corner for a strike. It's two and two. A year ago, he was four and one for the Knights. Trying to pick up his first win of 2024 and he induces a foul ball here from Hardesty. Marion, we touched on it at the beginning of the broadcast, Bo. 0-3 to start the season, looking now for their sixth straight win. Yeah, just, uh, you know, got some stuff, got some bonding under their belt down in Nashville during spring break. And got a strike out here from Kiefer on a breaking ball. That's his fifth K of the night. Two down here on the St. Joe six, and it brings up Ben Van Fleet. Now up to bat number three, Ben Van Fleet. Took a little something off the curveball to Hardesty. And Van Fleet, two out of three on the night, a pair of doubles. Keeper looking into the dugout. What do you think he's trying to find out there? Well, they're moving Cole behind the runner at first base, and so just playing him right behind, giving him more of a defensive advantage. And Van Fleet has a three-hit night. And the ball mishandled by the left fielder, and that'll allow everybody else to move up 90 feet on the Marion Air. That's one of the things we talked about, those extra bases, take them when you can get them, and Van Fleet put that ball out there. Prisgoda wasn't able to knock it down. Well, Brady Lonnier has the opportunity to get this one to be a little bit interesting here if he can get a base hit. Runners at second and third with two out. St. Joe down by seven, but we've seen the Huskies come back once before tonight. Swing and a miss on the fastball there from Kiefer. Looks like from the windup, Patty's got it just a little bit more giddy up. And even though there's a runner on third with two outs here, I'm sure Joe Turnock doesn't mind him going to the windup. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. He keeps raising the fastball like you talked about before. See if Mr. Lonegar will climb the ladder. That one was about chin high. 
Nothing in two. Got him. Three straight fastballs. Loniger strikes out, and Keeper has been in command since coming into this one. We've gone through six at Pachakowski Field, and Marriott on top on 46. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week is being brought to you in part by Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They're putting people over products. We go to the seventh inning here at Pachikowski Field, a 14-7 Marion lead. Our seventh inning sponsored by our friends at Marion High School. Yeah, Marion High School challenges students to spiritual and moral growth, academic and physical excellence, and social maturity. Marion values each student and strives to live the example of Jesus Christ as teacher and servant. To learn more, visit MarionHS.org. Big thank you to Ivy Tech as well. Ivy Tech's credits transfer to more than 100 colleges and universities in Indiana and outside the state. They offer more than 20 degrees qualifying for guaranteed admission at the largest four-year institutes in the state. With classes that fit your busy schedule, in-person, online, and in-between, enrollment is open. Visit ivytech.edu slash apply. Chase Bays had a big three-run triple back in the second inning. Two for four tonight. And takes a strike from Tomiak on the inside corner. It's nothing in one. These two teams were rained out back in late March. I was told the other night by the Marion assistant AD, Kyle Hanaszewski, they're looking to make that game up sometime in May. And it's very likely they'll see each other towards the end of May as well as they're in the same section. Yeah. Guarantee that's a non-conference game, and they, I get my guarantee is that uh, the starting pitchers will be the starting pitchers that they're going to see in a few weeks after that if that sure. game is played. And it'll be interesting to see who the starting pitchers are if they collide in the sectional as the swing and a miss, but the ball goes all the way to the backstop, and that allows Bays to get to first base. Now with the bat number one, Bryce was saying. It's a strikeout and a wild pitch as you'll see on our Tony Lutcher Matt Tolman Health Markets replay the ball hitting the plate not much Valent could do about it. Yeah it's one of those where you go to the down to try to block it but bounces right off that plate and over. So here's Bryce Lesane who has three hits already tonight as the lefty Eck throws over to first. I certainly have to think with the way that Mr. Keeper has thrown here tonight that Joe Turnock might look to him in a sectional matchup against St. Joe, but a lot of it depends on your draw too, right? Yeah, it depends on the draw and when you're going to even match up with them. I mean, we could get this situation where Zelensky and Eck are used for St. Joe and Bays and Kiefer are used for Marion. So it depends on the draw and depends on what days you're playing. What a know the count. Here on Bryce Lesane. Pitch fouled back and out of play. And the count evens at one and one. Health Markets is proud to support high school athletics. If you're a Knights fan, Tony Lecter is your guy. And if you're cheering for St. Joe, Matt Tolman will take care of you. Big shout out from Health Markets, Tony Lecter and Mark Tolman. Lesane with a 3.8 GPA, the three year starting quarterback for Michael Davidson's football team. And in his career against St. Joe at the plate, he's 9 out of 19. That includes today's 3 for 4 performance. 3 for 4, as you said, two runs scored. Just a fantastic job getting on base. Everything you'd want out of a three-hole hitter. Yeah. And there's a couple of RBI in there as well. 3-1. That's drilled to left field and over the head of Mason who backpedals and can't come up with it. And Marion has runners at second and third after Lusane gets a double. Marcus got or Marcus Marcus's <laughs> dad. <laughs> Bryce. I knew I was gonna say that tonight. I uh, played Legion ball with the, Bryce's dad, Marcus, back in the day. And uh, Marcus was Quite a player as well, but Bryce, who uh, 
Nice shot there. I mean, just got some good wood on that ball and drove that over Brent Mason's head. Here's Evan Schmittendorf, the catcher. He takes a strike on the outside corner. And there you see Schmittendorf, one of four all NIC players from last year in this game tonight, along with Brody Zielinski, J.J. Oliver, and Jace Lee. Hard to say who will be on the all NIC list this year. A lot of baseball to be played in this league as Schmittendorf goes the other way with an outside pitch and drives in another run for the Knights. It's 15-7, Marion. Nice job of going the other way by Evan. Knocking two strikes approach, letting that ball get deep, driving at the opposite field, knocking the run in. Just a great job at the plate, great at bat. Really liked what I saw there because a lot of young people will try to pull the ball and Schmittendorf, as you deftly said, stayed behind it there. Yep. And that's one of the keys to being able to hit to the opposite field. Yeah, letting that ball get deep, seeing it deep, trusting your hands, trusting your swing, understanding that that ball can get deep and you can just knock that ball through the hole. Cole Hunt, one for two tonight. Walked his last time up. Playing some first base tonight as he takes that one down low, one and oh. So a year ago, he struggled at the plate playing for Marion. What's the difference for him this year? I, it's his confidence. All about confidence, getting the time and understanding. He started out, had some few hits down in Tennessee, and really understands understands his swing more. And, and a lot of it was just the offseason, putting in the work in the offseason. Uh, a lot of these kids do that. I see a lot of these kids doing uh, camps and different things with different lessons. and. That's just the uh, way it is nowadays. Swing and a miss at a fastball there. It's two and one. He's also a very versatile player. He plays, what, four or five different positions. First, third, left, right, catcher, pitcher, you name it. He'll be out there and he'll do it for your teammates. Round ball to the right side. The second baseman comes over and Loniger makes the play, but it brings home another one, and it's now a 16-7 Marion Lee. Now the back. Number five, yeah, doing your job in that situation. We talk about baseball, some of the rules, some of the things you uh, need to do and understand in the game of baseball right there. Great example. Pulling That's the ball. his second RBI in a play yep. like that tonight. Sacrifice yep. flying to ground it. Yep, just getting that ball, moving the runner over, or uh, moving the runner in. Popped into right field, Van Fleet comes in and makes the one-hand grab, and the runner will hold at second as Jake Oliver flies out, and that'll bring up Michael Prisgoda. Now up to bat number four, Mike Prisgoda. And we see the courtesy runner now coming in for Schmittendorf with two out. Evan Maloney coming in, a run for Schmittendorf. Maloney, a junior on this team, getting his name in the scorebook tonight. Prisgoda is one for three tonight. Single pop-up, reached on an error in the fifth, and a walk in the sixth. And there's another free base given up to the Marion Knights on the wild pitch by Eck. And we talk about free bases, and, and just to explain the lexicon, although I probably don't need to. Um, yeah. I'll be guilty of mansplaining <laughs> here. Uh, walks, errors, wild pitches. Uh, and there have been a lot of them here tonight by St. Joe. Yeah, th there definitely has. We talked about one of the things St. Joe's maybe a little bit of Achilles heels on defense is giving out those extra bases. I like that right there. I mean, just that's a run and a base. Mason just drops a fly ball in left field. And Schmidt, or excuse me, Maloney scores, and it's now a 17-7 Marion lead. Well, now they're in trouble here in the uh, fifth inning of uh, getting. Well, the seventh or the inning. Seventh so inning. Yeah. the point is moot because St. Joe will still get to bat no matter what. Ground ball off the foot here of Gardini. Landshark's, tr Landshark's travel baseball and softball focuses on learning the game and player development. 14 seniors in its programs will play college baseball next year at the Division I to junior college level. Learn more at SH.
LandSharksTravelBaseball.com. That's Landsharks Travel Baseball. Eck delivers. Misses high and away, and it's one and one on Gardini. Silvio, two for four tonight. Pair of singles. As Bo mentioned, one of the few underclassmen to even be on the roster of this team. Ground ball off the glove of the third baseman, and uh, another St. Joe error keeps the inning alive. IT Service Corporation is the leader in Microsoft and Cisco Technology Solutions. They are providing experienced sales and technical support to businesses throughout Michiana for over 20 years. You can learn more about their services at itservicecorporation.com and go Marion Knights from IT Service Corporation. Four errors on the Huskies in this one as Brian Carrillo takes that pitch high. Carrillo one for two. He's got an RBI. And he might That's be picking down. up another one as he bloops it down the line. It's foul. Ooh, man. That looked like it was right on the line. Steve Kaiser was looking right down the line, too, and he had a little bit better angle than we did. Well, sometimes I tell Steve he doesn't, so, you know. <laughs> that was when I was coaching, of course. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> you get another look here on the... Tony Letcher, Matt Tallman replay. Ooh, it was close. Yeah, if you did look down the line, though, you have a first baseman, a guy running down first, and then a second baseman coming over to block that view. A lot to look at there. The 1-1 one, one misses in the dirt, skips away from Balant, and another wild pitch. So, a couple extra bases again. They are just piling up on the Huskies right now. Well, again, we talked about that. When they start happening, it's kind of like quicksand. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Here comes the 2-1 to Carrillo. Hit on the ground, foul. The base runner reached out to get at that, and Joe Chernock saying you really shouldn't do yeah, that. No, especially if it's not past the base at this point. I think Bob Schellinger informing the young man down there, too, that eh, it's yeah. not really how you want to do that. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes, two away. And the pitch to Carrillo. Swing at another tap ball, and he stays alive in the at-bat. St. Joe's strikeouts tonight are sponsored by Crimmins Carpet Services. That's father and son own and operate in South Bend for over 35 years. Our team is dedicated to providing our customers with quality cleaning and repairs. Not only do we clean for St. Joe, but Joe Crimmins and his sister Samantha and Danielle are alum. Remember, it's not clean till it's Crimmins clean. Go, St. Joe. Inning over, Marion up 17 7 as we go to the bottom of the seventh on 46. Chuck Freeby, Bohan, Angelo DiCarlo back with you as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Patty Keeper has been impressive on the mound. Marion has been impressive with the bats. It's led to a discussion that we will involve Mr. DiCarlo in here with a Bills heating sideline report. I know you're over there in that Marion dugout, so you know step away so your vote is not heard by the boys down there. But uh, I, I know that we've had discussion on air that we like Patty Kiefer as the potential player of the game. You've got another candidate. I mean, Bryce Lesane yeah. has been excellent. <laughs> Bryce Lesane's been fantastic. Four or five here tonight. Uh, yeah. He's made a nice couple plays at the base. So, yeah, I, I think he'd go either way, but my vote might be Bryce Lesane right now. You guys make the ultimate call. There's two up there versus only one down here. <laughs> Your math is absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, at this point, I mean, Patty did a heck of a job, but the leader of this team throughout this season and tonight has been Bryce Lesane. I mean, four for five on the night, three runs scored. I think he's got two two RBIs as well. Um, he's, he's done a fabulous job here tonight leading this Marion team. It's not as though there are bad choices here. No. So it looks like Bryce Lesane will be our player of the game. And the pitch taken on the outside corner for a strike by Joe Washburn. That's pending, of course, that St. Joe doesn't make this miraculous comeback here as well. Anything can happen in high school baseball, I'll tell you that. Washburn hits one in the air out towards center field. Going back is Jacob Oliver, and he makes the catch. 
probably about 15 feet shy of the fence out there in center. I tell you the one thing, you know, we talked about Jacob Oliver and kind of his struggles this year. He's probably going to be one of the best center fielders that you're going to see in this area. I mean, he tracks balls so well, and that's one of the things that's going to keep him in this lineup is his ability to control that outfield for those guys. Another reason Marion has won this game is they've kept this guy in the batter's box under control tonight. Jace Lee is 0 for 4. He fouls this one down the right field side. A long run for Carrillo, but he can't get to it. It's out of play. Nothing and one on the St. Joe center fielder. You just wonder when it's going to click for him this season because it has clicked in the past. It's definitely there. Oh, yeah, it, it's definitely there, and I've, I've seen it before. Uh, we'll go after this pitch here. Outside. I had, a, I had a junior who hit five, I think 513 as a junior, was all state as a junior, came out of senior year, was 0 for 29, his first 29 at bats. But it wasn't like he wasn't struggling. He just, he couldn't find a hit, could not get anything to drop, couldn't get that little duck to fall in, they call it. Two and one here on Lee. Kiefer has been challenging him with fastballs in this at bat. Marion had success tonight, fooling him with the curve. I think Kiefer tried one there, and it bounced in the dirt, and it's three and one. But he is a young man with tremendous talent. And if he gets it going, look out, because the St. Joe team can get hot. They're not bad. They've had a rough night, but they're not bad. Walk here. Even up 17 to seven, they're not giving him anything to hit at that point. Lee kept looking to make sure Evan Schmittendorf was gonna chase that one down. And he finally did. And here's Owen Balant. Seventh inning sponsored by Marion High School. Marion High School challenges students to spiritual and moral growth, academic and physical excellence, and social maturity. Marion values each student and strives to live the example of Jesus Christ as teacher and servant. To learn more, visit MarionHS.org. Reminder, we have more high school baseball for you next Friday night and Saturday morning when the Northridge Raiders go to visit the Mishawaka Cavemen. Should be a dandy in Baker Park. Fitzsimmons Field will have it for you Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Balin takes that one high. It's 1-0. Oh. The Raiders traditionally challenge for that NLC title and Mishawaka, John Hummers had some pretty good baseball teams over there as well. Yeah. Lee with a stolen base here. It might be registered as catcher's indifference, though. Northridge with that 1-0 loss early in the year to pin. Heck of a game. Have a heck of a pitcher's duel in that as well. Here comes the 2-0. Swing in a ground ball. It gets past the glove of the shortstop, J.J. Oliver. That'll be an error on Oliver. And it gives St. Joe runners at first and third with only one out for Brett Mason. And Luke Short will come in as the courtesy runner again here for Owen Bayland. Joe Turnock on his way out to the mound to have a word with Patty Kiefer and maybe just give his pitcher a little bit of a breather here. And also remind him that he's had a lot of success tonight against Brett Mason, fanning him twice. I mean, Bo, you've obviously got a son on this Marion team. You've seen them over the course of the year. They are the defending sectional champion. They're coming in here tonight, drubbing the ninth-ranked team in Class 3A. Do you think before too long we might see the Knights move up in the polls? Yeah, I think it's one of the things where they're a little you say butt hurt that they weren't in that polls early in the year but uh I, th I think now they really don't care about it too much i think i think now they're just like okay start out zero and three finally starting to get stuff going going our way um they're starting to really focus i think at the at this point now in the season and it's good 
Um, and, but you definitely want to be playing your best ball when you get later in the season. So there's probably going to be some little ups. You've got a uh, few uh, teams coming up that that's going to give them some run. A couple weeks, you got uh, Fort Wayne Bishop Dwanger and uh, Ileana Christian who just uh, beat Han Trey in 13 to three. <laughs> and are the defending state champs in yeah. class 2A. Yep. Here comes the 0-1 from Kiefer. And that's hit in the air to right center field. Carrillo and Oliver converging and it drops in between them. That allows Lee to score from second. And it's 17-8. An RBI single for Brent Mason. And it'll bring up Owen Fuda, who singled his last time up. By the way, there are no lights here at Pajakowski Field. Now, we still have plenty of sunlight, but that sun getting a little lower in the sky, making it all the tougher for a right fielder like Brian Carrillo. There's a strike on the inside corner and quite the look back <laughs> from Owen Fuda. That look back was one that's usually reserved for parents. Like, Mom, I can't believe you just said that. Instead, Fuda hits one high in the air to deep left field. Prisgoda going back. He's at the wall, reaches up and makes the catch. Wow, Fuda laid some lumber into that one, just not quite enough. Prisgoda, nice job of going back and tracking that ball down. Two outs. And Brody Zielinski represents the last hope for the Huskies. He's two for four tonight. Patty Kiefer looking to get the win in relief for Marion tonight. He's done a dynamite job out on the mound. And he throws a fastball past Zielinski here. It's nothing and one. Marion looking to go to six and three on the season. St. Joe would drop to five and two with the loss. And Marion would be two and zero oh in the NIC. Little duck snort out in the left center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And another run will score. Racing over to third is Mason. And it's 17-9. Now to back for St. Joe, number two, Odin Artist. St. Joe with that never give up attitude just going in there understanding that each at bat counts and trying to take advantage of it now that is the thing about the sport of baseball you can't run out the clock like you can in football and basketball yeah you still have to get that 21st out in a high school baseball game and sometimes that's a little tough to get as that one misses upstairs to holden hardesty who is one for four tonight Runners on the corners with two away, and Hardesty fouls that one away, and the count evens at one and one. St. Joe has had the upper hand in this series over the last 15 years. They've led it 27 to 10, but Marion looking for its third straight win over St. Joe, and they just may have it. High fly ball into center field. Jacob Oliver is there. And the Marionites have defeated the St. Joe Huskies tonight here at Pajakowski Field by a count of 17 to 9. Now stick around. We've got a lot to talk about on our postgame show, including our Steve Scott and classic touch painting player of the game. And we'll talk to him next on 46. Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Game of the Week, brought to you by... An impressive offensive display by the Marion Knights tonight here at Pajakowski Field as they down their arch rival St. Joe by a count of 17-9. We welcome you into the Reliance broadcast booth. Reliance, build, design, renovate. And Joe Chernock couldn't have designed it much better than what 
things worked out for his Marion team tonight. This veteran bunch came over. They jumped out on St. Joe early, weathered the storm of a comeback, and just kept pounding and pounding and pounding away. Yeah, I think when they got up 6-1, they were like, okay, we're going to kind of roll in this game. But St. Joe's like, no, 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 hold on a second. We came here to play as well. Come right back, 7-6. Patty Kiefer comes in, shuts the door, and then Marion's bats just keep knocking and knocking and knocking. And, you know, 17-9, to nine, there's a lot of run score between these two teams. Kiefer may have slammed the door, but the guy that kept breaking the windows for Marion is our player of the game, and he is standing by now with Angelo DiCarlo. Here with our classic touch painting player of the game, Bryce the same four for five, three runs scored, three RBI, and get the win in the Holy War. How does it feel? Uh, obviously, it feels great. You know, you train for days like this where you're playing your rival and you have a big game with the boys, especially it being the Holy War. And especially being up big like that in the last inning, you got to keep yourself grounded, just finish the game out. But in a lot of these, whether or not it was here in baseball or in football as the quarterback, What's the emotions like during a game like this, especially when you guys are making a lot of runs and then they're coming back and then you guys have another run of, of scoring? Yeah, your stomach's everywhere, so you just gotta keep yourself calm and, and keep telling yourself that you're here for a reason. Like, you've been training for this all year, all off season. So just, you know, tell yourself that you're ready for it. What was working for you at the plate, being four for five tonight? Uh, I was in a lot of two strike counts, so I had to defend myself a lot, but I mean, like I said, I've been training in that and just staying back on the ball, keep my hands through. Tough early season schedule. You guys lost the first three games. You've now won six in a row. What do you like about the way you guys are playing right now? Uh, those first three games are definitely rough, but we, we told ourselves that we, we have a special season going. With 12 seniors, we know we can keep this thing going. That six in a row, like we keep saying, the nights are hot. Bryce, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's Bryce Lusane, our classic touch painting player of the game. Chuck and Bo, back to you. The Knights are hot right now, and Joe Turnock's got himself a nice team. They're the defending sectional champs, eight of the nine starters coming back. Looks like they could make another run, not only at the sectional, but yeah. maybe they can challenge Penn for the NIC. Well, I, I think there's definitely a, a challenge there against Penn. Penn lost quite a few players as well from last year's team. They got some pitching back. They got some guys healthy, some young guys moving in. But, um, I mean, and nothing against the St. Joe team either. I mean, they're a very good team, very solid team. They're going to uh, be some play people as well. I mean, that's why they were ranked coming into this game. So um, two very talented teams. Uh, Marion was able to come out on top in, in this one. They still got to play in sectionals as well. St. Joe falls to 0-2 now in the NIC. That leaves yeah. a sting, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things in this conference. There's not been a lot of uh, two-loss teams that have won this conference. Uh, even back when I coached uh, at Bremen five years ago, uh, we had one loss and still didn't win the conference because Penn was the team that won that conference. So uh, one, one, two losses, it's, it's tough to win this conference. It's very tight with Penn at the top. Oh, we'll see another conference next week when we jump into the NLC with Northridge and Mishawaka. But our thanks to our TV46 crew who helped bring you this one, like our production manager, Dean Korsmo, and our usual talented cast. A reminder that next week, more high school baseball on TV46. The Northridge Raiders make the trip over to the Princess City and take on the Mishawaka Cavemen. We'll have it for you Friday night 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Don't forget to follow us on social media because we have all kinds of updates on breaking news for you on X, Facebook, and Instagram. And Angelo and I will keep you up to date on what's going on. Now for my broadcast partners, the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt and Angelo DiCarlo. Chuck Freebie, once again the final, Marion 17, St. Joe 9. So long from the north side of South Bend.